completely different to this car this is an expensive car we're gonna go and pick up a very cheap car and we've got something planned for it but before that I need to go and pick up Ben who's got the hours four, which won't start so I've got to give him a push and then we're gonna go back drop this off and then we're gonna go and pick that car up in the hours four. so we'll give you the car for one day and you broke so mate right so we couldn't get it started the other day I don't know what's going on with it because it seems to be juicing the battery and all the lights come on and stuff when you press the button it just clicks so I took it out of the gear and I took the handbrake off and on this it's like it slopes down so it should roll backwards and it's like it's it's like the brakes are locked on. I don't know what's going on. Well we are now mechanical minded. Yeah. So we should be able to fix this right. surely. So as you can see, it's saying it needs a service in the fog lights so out, it's probably just got a dodgy connection I need to do. But when I press the button, nothing. Doesn't even click, does it? No. So it's out of gear, as right. you can see, right? Yeah. The handbrake is off. Right. Now, it won't go backwards. It doesn't go backwards. Oh, that's look, watch. That's really strange. Brakes it's locked on, aren't they? Yeah, it's like the handbrake's still on. Yeah. <laughs> How mad's that? <laughs> Push it, man. Little. Right, let's pull. <laughs> Rescue, you know, when you want a job doing, do it yourself. What did you do? I just turn the key in and out of gear, and brake on and off. You know, just leave it to me. Right, now put it in first and see if it moves because we couldn't get it to move just. Uh, that might be an issue next. It starts. That's definitely stuck. Wonder why the brakes are stuck. Are they, are they still stuck on yet? No, no, it's fine now. Are you alright now? A brand new car, as usual. <laughs> RS4. Fixes right. itself. That means I had to get it going. I had to get it going because I didn't want to go to pick this car up in the McLaren in the rain with 950 horsepower and 950 newton meters of torque. So we're going this. <laughs> What do you think of it? Your McLaren? Didn't got, does it sound good? It's it's loud. Like you didn't need to text me and say, oh, I'm at yours because I heard you coming down the street right at the very back. And then I heard you again because I thought you turned around or something. Because I heard you twice. Um, once was loud, the next time was really loud, yeah. So uh, in fact, you'll be the reason why my bay windows fell off. I know the McLaren is pretty unaffordable for quite a lot of people. So I know some of you lot don't actually like the content on it, but we decided to get something a little bit cheaper. So the other day it got us to thinking, my car's 400 horsepower, but it's like 65, 70 grand in some markets now. Could we make a car that's 400 horsepower for less than £10,000? But regular viewers of the channel will know we actually picked up this RS4 about two and a half years ago for 9,750 and this standard has 420 PS. So when we got this, we actually dynoed it straight away because we were thinking, well, how much power does it have? It done 155,000 miles. It actually dynoed at 351 horsepower. That means we had to spend 1,400 pound getting a carbon clean and new injectors. And that's the thing, that then is over 11 grand for this car. And yes, it's 400 horsepower, but it's not a turbocharged 400 horsepower. It's not got the torque of a normal 400 horsepower turbo car. So we were wondering whether we'd be able to Get, um, just like a 140i? Yeah, just like a 140i. So that gives it away a little bit, saying we are we are going to go and get a turbo car because they're just better to modify, easier to get the horsepower and torque gains. So, what do you reckon? Comment, what do you reckon we're going to go and get? I'll give you um, an idea. It's £4,000, this car. It's £4,000, right? Uh, no. So the original one that we were going to get from Newcastle was £4,000. I agreed with the, the guy to go and pick it up. It was four grand. We were supposed to be picking it up today on the train, got my train tickets, and right at the death, the guy went, uh, oh, uh, I've not got the V5, I lost it. Nah, it sounds a bit dodgy to me. Let's leave it, let's find another one. So, 
we did find another one, but we've looked at that many cars this week, I forgot even what colour it is. <laughs> what colour is it? It's exactly the same colour, it's candy white. Uh, but then that'll probably give it away as well. Anyone that knows <laughs> what Candy White goes on, <laughs> you've probably got an idea. So we're trying to find the car, we, we don't actually know what number the guy lives at, but it should stand out because it's white. Well, it's not white, it's very dirty. So there you go, it's a Cupra K1. It is, and it's a legit one as well, it's not a Cupra with a, with a K1 body kit. This is uh, a legit Cupra, so yeah. In typical Eagle GT style, I didn't go according to plan because at, the, at least five panels needed paint and the engine didn't sound too healthy to be honest. It needed tyres all round. Oh, the heating inside the car didn't work. And that could have been anything, so just the labour to get that fixed could have been, well, a lot. It just generally looked like it had not been looked after. And you lot, you, always say, boys, stop buying lemons. So there we go, we've walked away for once. It's not all bad news, because the guy who said he'd lost the V5, the new one's arrived in the post today, so we're on our way to go and get it. So it's three hours to Newcastle, we've got a single ticket, so if this car's not right, how do we get home? He's got us over a barrel a little bit really, hasn't he? Because if this car's no good, we've got to get the train back. How much is the ticket to get back? Um, nearly 50 quid each. If the car's not okay, we'll have wasted the train ticket yesterday, which was how much? 22 pounds each. 44 pound when the guy said he didn't have the logbook yesterday, and the total, if we don't buy the car today. Best part, 200 quid. Plus the fuel before to get to leak. Around 40 quid there and back. A lot of people turn around to you and say, oh, it doesn't cost anything to run a YouTube channel, what's up with you? I've bought car, it's 250 quid. This one is 40,000 less miles, it's about 500 quid cheaper, the body works in better condition, still a little bit rough but better condition, and it has the ABS module. A K1 Cupra. It is, a Seat Leon Cupra. Yeah, it's the white, white car one. on the left, yeah, that's the one. This is a good up. start, it's clean. I know, yeah, thank God for that. £20.60 we owe you. After about an hour of haggling, we have bought a K1. But we didn't get it for four grand, we got it for three and a half grand. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we get it for three and a half grand? Uh, well, it was making a weird rattle from the engine bay. Tabby did say, those who don't know who Tabby is, he's awesome GTI. The chain tensioners and all that kind of shit, are, you know, it is a thing. But if anyone knows me, and anyone knows our channel, the first thing that needs to go is these horrible wind deflectors. I didn't get them on. Oh, there we go. There you go, mate. You're not having them. Right in the bin, that. That's a... Thanks mate. <laughs> now that looks miles better. So it looks like Lee has already had a go at this car with the paint. So every single panel from what I can tell has either been painted horrifically or needs paint. It needs a lot of rust taken out. The front two arches are rusty, the sills are rusty, and it looks like someone's gone mad with a rattle can. You know all the black bits? Like the front grill and little bits and pieces, they've all been, well, rattle canned. So we've got a few lights on the dash. It's got the tire pressure monitoring light, it's got the traction control light, there's a light bulb with an exclamation mark in it there. We think it's all related to the ABS module, hopefully. Door handles are a bit loose, wobbly. This side door doesn't open properly. It's just hit and miss if it opens or not. The radio isn't in the best of health either. That might look okay, but it's a bit flickery and yeah, it'll probably go off in a minute. But as far as Uncle Benji's concerned, there's the best bit about the car. And what is it? Listen to this. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a turbo flutter? And also, it looks like someone's driven through the Maxton Design uh, workshop because it's got it on the back, it's got it on the front, it's got it all over the place. So we're going to try and get it back to like looking as standard as possible. Ten minutes down the road, we're not even out of Newcastle yet, and it's Evil GT. Of course it is. We've got the engine light. Yeah, it wouldn't be an Evil GT car without the engine management light, would it? So, although engine management lights, they're not exactly the end of the world, but it is trying to tell us something. Positives, the clutch feels fine, the brakes feel fine, the accelerator feels fine, steering feels fine. There's no weird knocks or anything from any of the suspension and stuff, so, you know, 
It seems to be mostly cosmetic. We've got about 160 miles to go, about three hours, mostly M6, with an engine light. What is the worst that's gonna happen? We'll break down, like we did coming back from the Nürburgring. We love making content out of nothing. We've left a space on that trailer just for us. On that one there? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> We're about halfway on, so engine light's still on. We should be okay, it sounds okay, there's no weird noises. So when we get back to Warrington, we're gonna start working on the bodywork, get it back to looking as, as good as we can. It's a low mileage car, so we've got a good base for that. Uh, the main thing is, we've picked the car up for 500 pound less than we expected, so we've now got a six and a half thousand pound budget to do all the work, which includes TTE 420 hybrid turbos, get all that power out of the car, 400 horsepower plus, and see if we can do it under that 10 grand budget. And obviously, there's gonna be other stuff wrong with it. I mean, we've got the engine light. I mean, what could that be? Who knows? Hopefully, we haven't bought a lemon. One thing I know hasn't happened to this car is that it's never been in an accident because this car vertical report says so. One of the very few cars we own that don't have a colourful past is our lovely Cupra K1. Look at this report. It's pristine. It's just the kind of car you'd want to own. Let's be honest, the only car I've ever been with you to buy is the RS4 Saloon. All oh, right, I know where he's going with this. absolute gem. I know, I know. So this is going to be fine. I know where he's going with this. I go to buy cars on my own and I just buy lemons. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold my hands up with that. And the great thing with this is you can download it as a PDF, print it off and give it to your new potential buyer. Or in this instance, raffle winner and what better way to give any potential buyer the peace of mind by handing them a nice clean car vertical report to go along with the car but if you do want to see if we bought a lemon subscribe to the channel if you don't mind yeah. if you liked today's video hit the like button and uh, yeah you'll get all the notifications of anything future on this car we've got plenty coming up on it but we're going to try and do it as quickly as possible so people don't lose any interest, including us. Which is a lot more than I can say for this Leon I found. Although it's not recorded as stolen and the mileage all checks out, you can clearly see from the photographs that has been in quite a serious accident. And according to this report, it's a category S structural damage write-off. Not only that, this quite clearly shows us that it's been recorded as damage before then as well. <laughs> Car Vertical checks thousands of different databases all across the world to give you the most comprehensive car history check out there. And what's more amazing is that we can clearly see this car is back on the road because it's had an MOT in November 2022. So it doesn't matter if you're looking to buy a car, sell a car, or just get the history on a car you already own, make sure you hit the link in the description box below and use code EVILGT for your money off. Me and Uncle Benji cleared my garage out, ready for a car to come in. Oh nice, McLaren coming in then yeah. The McLaren is definitely not coming in, that's going to get upset with me if I keep leaving it outside. The RS4, that's not coming in. It is the Cupra. It is the Cupra. That we picked up last week for three and a half thousand pounds. And it starts, it's been there for a few days. But well, yeah, one of our cars that actually starts after it's been sat here. It's not in the best of health, it's got a few issues. But that's why it was super cheap, three and a half thousand pounds. I've got to say it again. Is that worth it? Does that look worth three and a half thousand pounds? Well, we're soon gonna find out because we're gonna start stripping it down now, taking all the stuff off it, getting it ready cosmetically for all the power modifications that we're gonna be doing. 400 horsepower plus 400, 400 and a little bit more. I went to Euro Car Parts and I said, give me the best trolley jack you have. Low profile, this. <laughs> uh, I know that it was about 40 quid. There for you then, mate. Oh, I love gardening gloves, mate. <laughs> as long as it takes the wheel off, that's the main thing, well, right? the jack's not gonna take the wheel off, is it? Right, that'll do. We've got a slight issue. Oh, you've not got the right size? No. Oh, you've got a torque wrench, you must have. Yeah, I've got that. What keeps wheels on from being stolen? Oh, it's got lockers. As every car wheel thief knows, lockers are always in there. Are they? No. Well, the light comes on eventually. The second place a wheel thief looks is the boot. A wheel one, not a fake one? No, Why a wheel. are these in here? What are they? How did they make it back? I thought we'd bin them. We did bin them. They're in Newcastle. Right, give us that. There's more here. Right, it's got to be under here somewhere. Got to be, otherwise, we're not having a good start today. 
Have you got the guy's number? Uh, I haven't, no. So as usual, Evil GT falling at the first hurdle, and the only reason we need to get this wheel off is check if the new wheels we bought, the stock Cooper wheels, just go on nice, because knowing you're here at Evil GT, what goes on? Oh, Nothing. no, Always no, yeah, li do you know what, we literally set out this morning, didn't we, we was like, right, we're going to sort the garage, get the tools all in a box, I mean, there's no organisation in there, but, there, you know, there's stuff in it that, that you can do bits to cars to. We're going to go to Rada, who refurbished all the wheels, and Ryan has got, like, a master thing to do the wheel nut for all the older cars. We picked these up the other day, they're the Cooper alloys, now we're just hoping that they are actually going to fit. The offset's okay. We so did I've, want to fit them first, didn't we? Ideally, yeah, that was the idea, just to make sure that we've not bought what could be Cooper wheels, you know, for like a, a Lupo or a Volkswagen Up or something, and they're like 12 inches big, but yeah. fingers crossed we're all right. Can you tell if they're a genuine Cooper Mark II? Don't be wheel? putting me under pressure. Yeah, they are original. ET51, the offset. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to need some spaces for that. 100%. And it says stay out there, look. Yeah, they are right. Okay, so we're in okay to so have these in further. Yes, these are in okay order, are they, Ben? Well, they're not that, they're not that bad. I just said, I've every seen much time. Worse. What's up with you? I've seen worse, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the price gone up now. <laughs> we're going to have to pay 20 for the wheel instead of a ton. Well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, he will put the price up. I'm thinking these tyres are all right. No, what's mate. wrong with that? There's Re a lot wrong with that. Re Brevorous, haven't right. it? Can I just tell you one thing, right? Well, you'll know about this. They're obviously good because they made two versions before that because this is a number three. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah that's, so must be good, right? that's probably because the other ones were da that dangerous, they had to revise them and put others. Listen, these look like they've been made out of recycled uh, ocean plastic. I, 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 I'll tell you. I mean, who's putting these on the Coopers, really? Why are you doing that? Road cruiser with a Z. <laughs> that's what we want. So, Ryan's going to refurbish them wheels. Hopefully, they're going to fit okay. We're taking a bit of a gamble, but. He did say they look like the genuine ones and they got to say it on it, so they should be okay. Offset seems a bit high to me, 51, but if that's what they are, that's what they are. Rada International, Trafford Park, wheel refurbishing. Mention us, Evil GT, I think you get 10% off. And then, once we get through all this traffic on the lovely M60, worse than the M25 this now, we're gonna go and take the Maxton kit off the car. So Ryan didn't actually have the locking wheel nut thing to get the, them off in there. So, Uncle Benji, £22. I'm still trying to pay for it because I'm on O2. And for those who have seen my Instagram, I can <laughs> never get a signal on O2. So I'm still trying to pay for it, mate. In the meantime, we will show you around the car, show you what we've bought. Because you've not really seen it yet, it's not in the best of condition. The front end is a bit sort of... That's probably had a bit of a knock. You can see it's cracked down there and the paint's a little bit tatty, the front bumper. This is not looking great, stuff like that, yeah. Bit here, uh, I think there's some, oh, there's a bit missing out of there. I think that should have a black thing in it somewhere. That needs paint. That needs paint, because that's been rattle canned by a four-year-old. What we was going to do with these wings was we, we were going to have a go at repairing them ourselves, sanding them down, filling them and stuff like that. The chap who had this car did do that. However, I read by quite a few different people on the forums, they just rot, they literally just rot. So even though you might fix this bit, it'll go again here and it'll go again there. They just said just them off and get new ones, which is what we've done. I'm wondering whether that just needs a bit of a sand because the rust from here has gone onto the sill. The paint here, it looks like watermark. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you can feel it, it's rough. I don't know who's painted it. Looks like the lacquer's bubbled. But I reckon at some point it's had it's definitely had paint. You can see where it was masked off as well. I need to try and sort this out because that's been rattle can black and it's sort of not very good that. Some hooligan has stuck this. But this has been gorilla glued on or tiger one, seal. Tiger seal. Whatever it is. So that is probably gonna rip the actual original spoiler off. We've got one at the front, but that should be bolted on, which should be easy. We'll jack it up. Oh, we've got, come off. oh yeah, we've got a top of the range jack now, haven't we? So we can yeah. do that. Uh, it's also got the rear diffuser, that's coming off at all. Not into that. This side doesn't actually look that bad. You can see where the sill is starting to go a tiny little bit there. So we're going to do a bit more investigation, take this skirt off. I mean, the skirt is hanging off anyway. It needs the other jacking point cover side thing. And obviously you can see there it needs the, the wing, which we have ordered. So although the paintwork is really bad, you can see it. It needs a lot of uh, TLC. There's no dents anywhere, so but at least we've got a good start with that. The interior is actually okay, but it should be reasonably okay because it's only done 86,965 miles. Happy which, days. for yeah. a 15 years old, next month, yeah. 
Not too bad, that. That isn't too bad, that, actually. That's just bonded on with a, a bolt at the front. need paint before it definitely needs it now. It needs it now, yeah, but hopefully we've only damaged the Maxton splitter. Uh, what we do, what we have found out though is that the intercooler is uh, held on with uh, cable ties. Nice. That's what we like to see, innit? Well, we knew this car had a little bit of history. Yeah. But it seems to be unravelling as we go. Definitely. Are you going to put all these certificates? I'm going to have to move in with you. <laughs> Favourite part of the day. What, oh, missing the skip? Leave it to me, mate. Is it looking good or bad? It doesn't look that bad, mate, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the rust that's come from the art, the actual wing itself, looks like it's it's not been great for the bit of the sill, but it is, it's fairly solid. Yeah, they've seen better days, haven't they? I mean, it rides all right. There's no knocks or bangs or anything, but I mean, them springs are rusted. The cut, the actual shock itself is all rusted. We have got a little bit of surface rust there. Just a matter of trying to get this rear extended spoiler off and the rear diffuser. This is going to come off. It's probably going to pull the paint off as well. So you're probably going to need to paint that little bit. Looks like we're going to have to take the spoiler off because it's painted in there. I don't think we'll be able to sand it down and get it ready for paint. But the problem is, where does it come off? Because there's no sort of like bolt holes to get at. So another YouTube video for you. I've got to take the bumper off. Just screw it in. been a fan of some strips even when they were all the rage which they're not anymore are they do people still have these so after looking on the forums it's said that this is bonded on and I kind of believe it because there's over bond there like it's spilling out there and it does feel a bit wobbly and you can see it probably will come off with some fishing wire and a bit of heat but Sean at the body shop said don't take it off he'll do it he'll sort it out because knowing us there will be a bolt somewhere knowing our luck and we'll end up snapping something yeah. and then so we just need to put the wings on get the wheels on so as with all 80 90,000 mile cars that's gone so you can actually feel the the steel inside we're going to take it off to MTS you're going to take that seat out because you are the expert at taking seats out I, well I'll try I know you are yeah MTS in Warrens MTS Cheshire they're going to do it for us because they are the experts Harman Becker. It's Bluetooth. Bluetooth? Well, it says it's got a Bluetooth thing on it. It is a Bluetooth interface module. Whatever that does. Whatever that does, I'm assuming it does some Bluetooth things. So that is where we're up to, up to now. So if you want to see part three, make sure you subscribe. And in part three, we're going to buzz this car down, all the panels ready for new paint. Thanks for watching part two. See you in part three. Top at MTS. We've also been to see Danny at Wigan Bank Parts to go and get the slam panel. And the reason we've got that, actually, that's quite light. Mm. It's quite heavy. The reason we've got that is because 
the previous owner has chopped it out. They butchered bits to get this aftermarket intercooler in. Hold on, mate. What? We're going stage two on this. So when we change the intercooler, we're going to need to do that as well. Hopefully, the intercooler that we get is specific for the front end of this car because I think you guys will correct me if we're wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is either a Mark IV or a Mark V Golf. All of this is the same, so. So these are the side bits for the jacking points. Right? Yeah, so if you ever see a Cupra, a Leon Cupra Mark II, with the kit on, you'll see that they're missing every single one of them. I know Christmas is finished, but right. there you go. Oh, thanks, present. mate. His and hers. This is his, obviously. So here at Evil GT, we can't afford to snap on uh, lights. So this is a work light, £16 for two off Amazon. Amazon specials. Bargain, that. Yeah. Metal's metal. Are you saying aluminium's different? I'm saying aluminium's still a metal, but it's not magnetic. That's how you know it's aluminium. Can you usually. prove it to me? Yeah. The wings in the bonnet are alley. Pull, you're pulling that off like that. It actually wants to stick. Go on, then. <laughs> No, it doesn't. But the door is steel. That's why it's magnetic. All right, Einstein. You learn something new every day, mate. What are you doing with the lights? I'm going to send them to Troop at EM Tuning because he did our RS4 B7 with the laser etched Evil GT. And we're not going to do that because obviously this car is going to be a lot more generic. But he's like, I can put new projectors in, LEDs, the headlights will be mega. There we are. There's the other one. Let's get them boxed up, said to Troop. <laughs> Did you hear that? Water? Yeah. Where the hell is that? There's water in it somewhere. Well, this car has actually got a uh, moisture issue. Has it? The sunroof was wet. Yes, it was. And the front windscreen. We need some sort of dehumidifier, but if you listen. Is it gone? I think it has. I don't Fixed know where it. though. Well done. Obviously, I've sorted it, yeah. So the reason we're doing a, a blow over with the paint is there's loads of little bits like that all reacted on the paint and it's all over the place. The roof obviously we have to take the black off. The paint is, is not very good and it gives us a chance to practice our prep work, doesn't it? Say us, you've well, been doing it. this might be the last time we ever do it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pads to sand the car down. You asked for some pliers. Yeah. Oh, this oh. wheel's there to get the surface rust off, you know, on the sill. It might be a little bit too coarse then, but I've got them anyway. <laughs> that is the directo rust. Oh, it must work if it's got an O on the end of it. <laughs> and that's for the wing. So when we get the rust off, you put that on and it supposedly converts any remaining rust into the metals, the normal metals. You will absolutely love this little screwdriver thing. Why? I got it purely because you are so lazy. Why am I? Look at how it does this. Good that, isn't it? What? What's it doing? I don't know. <laughs> Just go around like that. Oh, I want um, I want a different one. No you know way. That? So this is going to grind off the rust. That might be a bit overkill. So what you do is I've got some other bits and you just put it on the end of the drill and it's just like a thing and it goes around like that and it just gets it off. We need these, right? There was a bit in here, in this bit with the screws. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The nuts. Yeah. We couldn't get them off. No. Easy. These are going to do it. Oh no, they're not. They're just normal spanners. <laughs> what have I bought them for? <laughs> well, they'll come in on me anyway, won't they? That's what I'm dealing with here, seriously. That's the thing I said, the wheel for the oh, drill. Yeah, yeah. Probably something like that. Yeah. I'll get the surface rust off the sill. Oh. Yeah. Total that we spent on Amazon, £250 for all that stuff. That's not that. bad. 
Lee's continuing with the bodywork, getting that sanded down. I've taken the door handles off, which didn't actually prove to be that much of a problem. I've taken the rear boot badge out because it's been rattle cam black, it looks terrible. Uh, but there's not really anything else for me to do, to be honest, because there's only one sander. And Lee seems like uh, he's got it all under control, so I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll get off, mate. I'll leave you to it, yeah? I don't want to take credit for all of the car, so you do a bit. And Are you adding up now? No, I want I want you to take credit for some of it. You got it off, yeah, like prepping up, prepping up. <laughs> well. This was the bit I wasn't looking forward to the most because the paint's actually gone right down there behind the windscreen, and it actually looks to me like the windscreen must have been out at some point to get the paint behind there because there's no way you could have um, sprayed in there and actually got it to key onto this because you can't sand in there. So. This is going to take a couple of hours to do, whereas the whole car with the sander has probably taken a couple of hours to do. Just got to get a little bit more of the black off there. Wings should be here today, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, it's more or less ready to go to the body shop to get painted up. Don't forget the bumpers. Oh, we've got to do the bumpers as well. <laughs> oh, crap. The other side is missing a letter. This is missing the A, the other side is missing the C. So we need to take these off. Take them to your mate. Yeah, Chico, he owns a vinyl and graphics company. So I've already sent him the pictures of it and said they're all stickers. If I take these off, can you make a stencil and make us some new one? So, so don't stretch it, don't rip it. It's not a good start. Right? No. So that's the rust off the sill as much as we can get off. Yeah. This is directo rust. This acts as primer, undercoat and top coat, but it also sorts the rust out as well. So right or wrong, we're gonna put it on. So that's the first coat put on. We'll put a couple more on, just make sure it's done. See what Sean says at the body shop, it's probably wrong though. I just think when you finish it, you'll get a sense of achievement. I will, yeah. We have done this car, well, most of it anyway, apart from the paint, and apart from the wheels, and apart from the seat. Well, probably about 20% of it. <laughs> well, 20% better than nothing, it, right? I'd take a 20% certificate all day long. We have the wings, I finally turned up. These were 256 pound, I think. Delivered, Probably painted days. in candy white. Perfect. Well, I presume it's candy well, white. Well, what I did say to Sean at the body shop was, we, yep. were, we needed to wait for these because rather than then repainting something that's been freshly painted, he could use that for his colour. He puts his little machine on and then it reads the colour and tells him to mix his paint with whatever. So, happy days. Full of good ideas, you mate. We've wire brushed it off. Yeah. What's it called? Rusto. Rust Rusto, repair it. Yeah. Turns, turns rust into metals. Yeah, yeah. That sounds right? good, that, John. It's like a brand new, that now. <laughs> well, Sean, look okay. We've done most of the work for you, right? I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm in one of them going, American low down. riders. Keep going. But you don't look any different when you're not on the seat. <laughs> Rude. So we'll come back to that in a few days and then we've just got a little bit of stuff we've got to put all the well you've got to put all the bumpers and stuff back I on. thought the Royal Wii was out then again. Yeah, Are we so not gonna drop be... these off? Oh. First attempt doing the bumpers, what do you reckon? The bumpers are not a bad actually. Oh I did then. Look at how glory on set! We'll try that again, we'll come back in a few days and it'll all be painted. We've got some Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sports. The size is 225-40-18, which is the factory tyre size for the Kufa K1. How much? Where'd you get them from? These were 400 quid and we got from Asda tyres of all places. They literally came the next day. Asda? Asda. All the Cooper K1s I've seen were gloss black. No, no, no. 
Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure. Gloss black. Well, I'm, well, I'm black then. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good at this. <laughs> yeah. So thanks to Ryan at Rada International, Trafford Park, that's the wheels done. If you want your own wheels refurbished, check them out on Google, Rada International, Evil GT10, is the code, 10% off. We'll go and see Sean at the body shop. The Cooper's done. We've just got to put it back together, mate. Good luck with that. Everything's going pretty good up to now until we get to the door cards. Now we thought this was probably going to be a 20 minute job but it actually worked out. It more like one and a half hours to do both sides. It's the most difficult door card to put on ever. can see they look amazing troop sorted us out em tuning and rather than even gt in the lens is put k1 because obviously this is a cooper k1 mega we'll do you some nighttime driving as well so you can see what they're like at night you say that every time say that but i won't i asked the lads at mts to just do me the side bolster which is this bit so they put a brand new piece of foam underneath it they were like, oh, you need new this, you need new that, which is right, we do, but let's be honest, it's a 15 year old car. Once this is cleaned up properly and we've hoovered it all and you know, got the shampoo on it and stuff, it'll look mint. So reason why there's tape on the bumper here, we still need to get the clips for the new wings because I'm an idiot and threw the old wings away. We want to get a new grill because the grill was a bit scabby and couldn't really be sorted. That had chicken wire so we need the original K1 grill, so about 90 quid. I've got the fog lights coming, these are a bit scabby so I might get new ones in there. We still need to put the arch linings in and the rubber bit. It sounds mint though, doesn't it? We need to get some spaces up and stay at that offset, that's shocking. We've still got to put the spoiler back on which needs tiger ceiling or however it's put on we'll try and do it a bit neater we've got rid of the original aerial and put a shark fin on bit of an oem plus i think that looks a bit better rubbers oh yeah on. we need to get some new new door rubbers because they were like um they look like the ocean didn't they it was quite windy we also have ordered well i say ordered we've asked danny at wigan bag parts for a silver one he's yeah. got one and 15 yeah, quid yeah. good lad nice then one then it'll match the exhaust it will no one's still smoking still need to get the replacement skirts because the ones we've got the fixtures underneath are broken off so it won't fix back in so we're We've still got, looking for them. We are, yeah. Driver's, uh, passenger side is fine. We need to get a driver's side one with the tabs. We might have to fix the one we've got. Who knows? Still needs quite a bit, but as you can see, it's looking really, really good. Part four, we're going to start tuning it. So the idea is to try and get 400 horsepower. We've spoken to TTE, who've, um, they're going to help us with a TTE 480. Uh, even though it doesn't need four, a 480 for 400 horsepower, they say it's the better turbo to do 400 horsepower with this car. Still got to pay for it. Don't think we're getting it for free, but intercooler racing line intake racing line and the tuning is from oem plus so for those who watch the rs4 get tuned the b7 ben wardle who tuned that he's going to be tuning this as well in part one we bought this car three and a half thousand pound cheapest one in the uk it was it was very tatty part two we prepped this whole car in lee's garage we bought some new wheels from wigan bag parts we had them refurbished at rider international we bought new tires they're the goodyear eagle f1 super sport we also took the seats just in there to MTS Cheshire. They redid all the foam in the bolster, made it like a brand new. And in part three, rubbed it all down with the sander. We had it painted in this white color and we mainly put it back together, not completely. And if you're wondering why it's not been completely put back together is because today we've got an appointment with Awesome GTI to try and make this car 400 horsepower. So just before we take it in there to go and see if we can do 400 horsepower with it, we'd better make sure that the engine's all right. The engine management light came on 10 minutes into the drive home. We found out what that is, and that's the decat. So the car's been decatted, but when we bought it, he took the map off that was on it. So now obviously the car's looking for a cat, which ain't there, and that's why the engine management light come on. And as for the ABS light, that's on because we know about the ABS module. That is broken. We bought it with a broken ABS module, so we need a new one of them. So the ABS module sits just underneath the battery. We definitely need that to be working. We need the ABS and traction control, because this is about to have 400 horsepower. At the moment, it's not looking good. Rear tow bushes, rear trailing arm bushes, 
brushes, offside rear caliper that is seized and not very good, dog bone mount is split in the middle, offside outer CV boot is missing its clip and the aftermarket makeshift intercooler with the pipe it's catching on the fan which I think was what was making the noise when we come to pick it up. The rear subframe and all the arms and stuff that they've seen better days are a bit crusty. We're going to have a look to see if we can replace them. Rear subframe with all the bells and whistles on it. Have you got one? I'll do you the polybus one for 80 quid, the normal one 70 quid. So Danny at Wigan Bag Parts very kindly has said that we can have this rear subframe that is fully polybushed for 80 quid and it is a little bit scabby but that's nothing a wire brush won't sort out, isn't that right Lee? Yeah. Johnny's just disconnecting the injectors now so that we can do a compression test to make sure it's alright. The spark plugs definitely need changing there, the stock spark plugs. I'm going to put some NGK race plugs in it. This should be between 150 and 200. If it's below 150 it ain't good. <laughs> So cylinders 2, 3 and 4 are fine, they're all reading fine, about 13 bar, 190 psi, we've roughly worked it out, the conversion. Cylinder 1 however, we've had like, what, 85 we've, uh, psi, uh, 100. 100 psi, I think we got it up as high as 130 psi, but it's still not anywhere near enough for the tolerance and it's miles out, so there's something definitely wrong with cylinder 1. Nearly everything is leaking out of that, it's nearly 100% leak, it's, it's, it's gone. But it's not coming out of the dipstick holes, which means it's not coming out of the bottom end. It's not coming out of the exhaust, it's coming out of where the oil uh, cap is, which is more likely to be the inlet valves. Not quite seating right, which is used sometimes a spring or something, I don't know. There we go, engine's out right. So, we've got a problem with this, this is one of the fuel pipes I believe. But Greg's saying that the end's all cracked and not very good. It's a little bit crusty and a bit crap. So we need to get a new one of them. Somebody's absolutely butchered the air conditioning pipe at the end of it, as you can see. So we can get a new one of them. Now, I've had a look. TPS, £282 at cost to Awesome GTI for that pipe there. That's it. But Danny at Wigan Vag Parts, 20 quid. What a lad. So we're no professionals, however. That is not supposed to do that. So we might as well change the flywheel and clutch at the same time. Why not? We either buy a used engine, which could have other issues for about 12 to 1500 pounds, depending on which engine it is, or we could work with the one we've got, maybe bore the uh, block out, put some oversized pistons in, forged pistons, for similar money. But at least we know what we're working with there. So I think what we've decided to do is take the engine out, get it to our unit, strip it down, go and get it machined, get some oversized pistons in it, forged pistons, probably the Wassner kit, something like that. Get it back in, we're gonna have to run it in for about a thousand miles, and yeah, go from there, but I think that's probably the best thing to do with this engine. And the rear subframe on this car is awful, it's really bad. We went to Danny at Wigan Bag Parts, and for 80 quid, he's given us this subframe that's polybushed, as you can see, there's polybushes here, uh, polybushes in these, I don't know what the arms are called, you guys will know at home, but the subframe's still a bit crusty, it's not as bad as the one that's on it, but it is still bad. So, what I thought was, we could swap it with this. Now the arms on this have just got the standard bushes on, but they're in much better condition. But the subframe's in better condition as well. And Danny has given us this in with the 80 quid. I found a company round the corner that will sandblast and powder coat, make it look like a brand new conditions rear subframe for 220 quid. So I think we're gonna go with that. powder coated and painted black bit of a subframe the rest of it's in there and we got it done flare powder coating so they sandblasted this and all the arms primed them and then powder coated them black 220 quid i don't know whether that's cheap or it's not i have no idea you guys will know we'll come and have a look at this that's crusty that mate yeah so where do we start we could replace all this are we going to replace it to be fair i mean it could do with some suspension i look at the state of them struts this isn't the best, is it? That could do. Where's your Rusto? Director Rusto. Director Rusto. That's going to sort that out. And it's white. And these are the only bits we couldn't get powder coated because they're riveted in. Uncle Greg here is going to paint it. I've got a little announcement to make. Dean's son, what's your son's name? William. Billy. William. For those who watch, if you would very kindly subscribe to Billy Bob's The Boss. He's only nine, so don't pick on him. Because I know you give us grief. <laughs> you can't pick on a nine year old, that's tight. How many people to take a subframe off? Uh, Go on, you might as well help when it's full. I should now, I've got me, I've got me, well I haven't got my subframe certificate, but I do have like my nuts and bolts to it, don't I? So. Six. 
This is where we come to for the cheapest prices in town, isn't it? We're after two rear calipers for the Cupra because one seized, so obviously you've got to replace them both, haven't you? Evil GT 99. You've got to quote that discount code to get 99% off. <laughs> Has it ever worked? No, I don't think it has. <laughs> no, I don't think it has, not even for us. Calipers and pads, how much? Calipers, pads, about 200 quid. Right, so we found the genuine deal. Weird. Pop 90 pens. quid. 90, 90 pounds for that. Much. Better? Yes. So now we just need this one. Don't panic when you see the old bearing going on here. Which we have ordered new, they're just not going to be here for about five or six days. So this is at least to get us moving around. These clips here are obviously broke off the brake lines that's the clip it to the subframe. They're broke, they're 75p each, so we've had to order four or four or five of them, whatever it was. We've got the light level sensor to go in. ABS sensors, them. Obviously they were in the old subframe, but they were seized in and all crusty. So the backing plate for the discs both sides, because that one I think was rotten that side, so that's knackered. So when we're talking to you about um, whether you can buy and build a car for uh, 400 horsepower for less than 10 grand, it's like, well, yeah, you probably could, but could you do it properly? That's probably the question that you should ask. And there's loads of things on this that it's like, even the bolts, look at these bolts are brand new. Look at them. All brand new bolts. I mean, some of them bolts, no joke, are like four, five, six pound each. For bolts, it's absolutely ridiculous. These are knackered. So I've ordered coilovers with the springs uh, for front and rear. I've ordered anti-roll bar for the rear, anti-roll bar for the front. The old drop links are seized on the old crusty subframe. So we've got to get drop links for it as well. But it'll be like Trigger's broom, this car. I don't think there'll be much left of the original car to see. But the best thing that we have bought is this bad boy. It is a TTE, 480. So even though we only really want to go 400 horsepower, I'm not interested in much more than that. A nice, safe, steady 400 horsepower. I bought this K1 because I thought it was less of a lemon than the one we went to first because that one was a thousand pound more expensive and 40,000 more miles. However, we are establishing that this car, especially the engine, is definitely a lemon. Someone's done the timing belt and they've not put the case back on properly so the idler's been running through that. So it's a good job you are stripping it and not going straight to 400. Right, because that wouldn't have been good. No. So that's all of this bit here for anybody who's wondering. Where does that idle, what does, down here somewhere? So, this bit that snapped off. Well, that's been running on for oh, a little yeah, while. in there. Yeah, that's not good. Right. So, I'm glad you've took the engine out to do the turbo because someone's had to go the turbo before and kindly snapped some bolts for us. Right. But that one's snapped. That, that one's snapped. snapped. That one hasn't. That one's snapped. Right. And that one's been snapped for some time. Being butchered. Oh my god. Is there anything good about this? Um all I could hear from this corner was Scott going, oh, well, that was loose. That was broke. That's missing. Oh, it's probably a good job I took that off because that was loose. That is worrying. These engines have a lot of common issues. That's one of them is the um, the wear and the cam follower, and that actually looks okay, so that's a good sign. Right, would you still say that we should replace it anyway? No, we're gonna replace the follower, Right. but we don't need to replace that. This engine's definitely been apart at some point because the valves are clean. Right. If anyone knows these, they coke up, Right. and uh, these aren't that bad, actually. It's been looked after in some sense, it's not been put together very well. This is the moment of truth. How bad it actually looks in there. This is the cylinder we've been having the issues with, with compression. It doesn't actually look that big an issue. I mean, there's a, there's a slight bit, cards in my thing, slight bit on that, that bit there, but not like that should be losing 100 PSI, surely? No, the head gasket was definitely gone because we saw that coolant was leaking out the side. However, what we did find is time belt was loose. There's a good chance that we've got some bent valves. You'd expect it to be all the way across, but we've got good compression on two, three, and four, haven't we? Yeah. I would say that that needs to go and get tested as well. Time for some pop. Yeah, someone's used a nice amount of silicon on it. Bathroom ceiling, that's what I like to see. <laughs> uh, there's also quite a lot on the Focus RS as well, so, uh, so yeah. Is there? Yes, there's quite a lot on the Focus RS, definitely. So there's another common issue that we're going to be dealing with. What's that? Balance shaft. High horsepower cars at high RPM, these C's. Right, okay. And then your engine's dead. Well, that's definitely something that we could do without, mate, to be honest with you. There isn't actually any crap in there, which is rare. And the silicon has managed to stay away from anything internal, so... Oh, there's a little bit of plastic. It's to be expected. Yeah, that doesn't look that 
that bad actually. No. How does that piston look? There's no broken rings and the ring lands are fine, yeah. I'm confused now where this compression loss is coming from because you're saying that the bore inside there, obviously the other side and the side is, is fine or it looks okay. Piston also looks okay. Yeah, that seems fine. to be fine. So then it's got to be the head, hasn't it? It's got to be a valve somewhere, a vent valve, something not seating right in there. Yeah, it could even be an injector. So when it's had the, a possible valve clean, it might have had an injector out and not seated correctly. But we do know the injectors are seized in. Can't get these out at all? No, they're seized in. They're going to need pulling. Brilliant. And this is what happens when you start messing about with engines and, you know, wanting more power and all this kind of stuff. What happens when you buy lemons? We haven't actually established whether it is a proper lemon yet because we don't know what the problem is. Scott very kindly stripped this engine down for us and we were hoping to see a massive big gouge in this bore and broken ring lands on the piston and all that kind of stuff. However, we didn't. They're all okay. They're all fine. The pistons and the rings are all fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all whatsoever. However, in here, there is a tiny, I don't know if you can pick that up on camera there. Yeah, I got But it. there's a vertical, there's two or three vertical lines, literally bang vertical up and down, um, that you can actually get your fingernail into. You can feel them a tiny bit. Nowhere near enough for a 100 PSI loss but there is a slight score on the bore in there. That then doesn't solve our problem as to where this compression leak is coming from. So Tabby said, put some oil in here. So these should all be perfectly sat flush and seated. There was more oil in here, but it's just because I've dabbed it up because we're going to be taking this to somewhere in a second anyway. You can see that it's been leaking out through the inlet valve, which means that it's one, if not both, of the inlet valves that aren't seated correctly, whether it's because they're bent or whatever it may be, I don't know. Which would explain our compression loss. There's, what a, there's a place, literally, you could throw a brick on their roof from here, where they're gonna do a pressure test on that as well anyway, just to check to make sure there's no other leaks anywhere else. And they can bore this out. We're probably gonna get a set of half, half mil oversized Wassner pistons, the forge piston and rod kit. Great news, we've identified what the issue is. In part five, we're gonna be forging the engine, putting the forge rods and pistons in. We're gonna be skimming the head and doing whatever else that that needs, I don't know. Putting it all back together, but there might be a bit of a twist. So check that out, part five, and we'll see you there. Well, that ain't a good start, is it? Because you can't even get the box in. I knew I should have kept the hatch back. If you just stumbled on today's video, here's a quick recap. We bought the car from the tune for three and a half thousand. Then we stripped it down, fixed the seat and the bodywork. We got it painted, and then we took it to Awesome to do a health check on the engine to see what it was like before we started tuning, and that's when the problem started. So the engine had a problem, 100 PSI down on cylinder one. So we had two options, replace the engine or forge the engine. So we decided to take the engine out and forge it, because now we know what we're working with. We've never forged an engine before, so what could go wrong? This here is the block, and it, the, this bit's been machined flat. Scott, what's that, what's that bit called? The block. The block. <laughs> yeah, so that, well, that there has been machined, as you can see. And then the, inside the bore's been machined, half a mil each bore. So we've got half mil oversized pistons. They've been bored to the piston size, so they will fit like a glove, mate. There's the new flywheel in there. We've gone for a dual mass to save on gearbox lash. What we didn't want, really, was a car that was hard work to drive, right? However, we want decent power. And with the organic clutch, which is like the whole circle thing, you know, with the friction material that goes all the way around it, you have to limit the torque. And by limiting the torque, that means it's not evil GT. We've effectively ruined how the car's gonna drive, but it'll have more power, so. Many, many weeks later, we've got the engine back. The engine shop did absolutely everything. They fully machined it all out, all the bores. They've done all the head work on it and all that kind of stuff as well. So they've done everything and they put it back together to this state. The bill so far for that engine to be on that pallet was just shy of 2,000 pounds for anybody that's wondering. All the machine work, and putting it back together and all the head work and the valves and the valve guides, all that stuff. This is the TTE 480 Big Boy Turbo. Now this you can either have as a main unit, which I think is just shy about two, two and a half grand, or you can do a surcharge where you send your old turbo back. As long as that's in decent condition, it's not got cracks everywhere and all knackered, they will give you a surcharge. I think it's about 1,200 quid. So in the end, this has cost us just shy of 1,800 pound this unit because we've sent our old one back up and the paint job is 1,500 pound. So, so far, if your mash is adding up, the car costs three and a half grand. 
The turbos cost us £1,800 and so far the engine rebuild has just been shy of £2,000. We've then got a bill in there. I'll save that until probably the end of this video, maybe next video, but I nearly threw up when I saw it. So <laughs> for those who are good at maths, I think you'll already see that we're well over 10 grand on this car now. And that leads me on to a few comments that you guys were saying a little while ago about, oh, it's dead easy to do a car, 400 horsepower hatchback for less than 10 grand. And I suppose it might be, but whether or not it's done properly and how long it will last, who knows? So we bought coilovers and had it painted and you know we've had the rear subframe powder coated loads of other things so we've gone way above and beyond but we could have done it for less than 10 grand but we'd have had a bit of a shed still bit of a situation report we've had to go and buy a load of new injectors the four injectors that were in it the baskets at the end have completely gone knackered it's there 200 quid each best part of we've gone for some ngk iridium whatever they are eldor corporation premium ignition coil packs like the the r8 in inverted commas coil pack so that is going to be going in here and i'm sure that is a job that i could do new spark plugs and coil packs in by me so you can guarantee if there is a misfire on this car you know who's going to get blamed, don't you? I fitted a new PCV valve because this one is 2009 and these are quite common to fail. The lads had one in stock, so uh, we fitted that. We're going to get the flywheel on, the new Sax Performance Sintered clutch we're going to put on. We had a paddle clutch on a couple of different cars. We had one on the B7 RS4 and I didn't like it. It's just too harsh for daily driving. However, we didn't want to cap the torque on this car. We wanted to, you know, it's forged rods and pistons. We've gone to town on it. We've done a lot of work on this engine, so I didn't want to then be limited by an organic clutch it's going to compromise the drive a little bit i would i would expect but it is what it is this is a cooler pipe coming from the firms that you just said and there's a <laughs> weird random jubilee clip right <laughs> <laughs> rather than buying a new one they stuck that in and jubilee clipped it <laughs> we need to order a new one of them I'm, I'm assuming and that's not going to be cheap because i know how i look it's 10 to 12 there's obviously lunch time yet till one so then he's going to have four hours to somehow get that engine back in the Cupra and get it started. What we're probably gonna have to do for the time being is put the original slam panel back on with the original welly cooler because the new intercooler isn't here yet. It's bolted in where it needs to be bolted in, so it's put now attached to the car. Obviously there's just the hoses and different connectors and things that we've got to connect up. I say we, Greg's going to do that because I haven't got a clue what goes where to be honest. But I feel like we're on the home straight, this feels good. Now, great news, pretty much everything is back together. This all looks mint. The worry is, is that this oil here is mineral oil. I got it from Euro Car Parts because I couldn't get Miller's in time for today. It's 1540 mineral oil, and this car takes 530. But apparently it's something to do with the minerals in it, helps the engine to bed in. It quite specifically says on the front of it, it's for diesel engines. One thing I do have to stress is that's not Awesome's recommendation. I spoke to the engine shop who did all of the boring and building and all that kind of stuff, and they said, it's fine. all sounds like it's at the top end so whether or not the oil pressure is not building enough to get the oil up the top or what I don't know we at least got it started I don't know Alan's <laughs> laughing <laughs> brilliant you can tell it's not his problem can't you so never mind that I just went outside to, to, to move my car out of the way and it was literally the oil I did say that because obviously I'm an expert in that so this just needed some oil up here right the hydraulic lift is needed oil there we go so that's all sound now we're all oil pressured up and uh, Miles what is this and why have I got to change it? Aircon condenser. It's an aircon condenser. Oh. As you can see. <laughs> I'm not sure you're supposed to be able to see straight and away through it. The other thing is, yeah. you can see how it's all more or less like blocked here. Yeah. So that's going to be blocking airflow over your intercooler. Intercooler, because the intercooler is sandwiched in this. And that's why people say the welly cooler is better because that's front mounted. But we're not going to go with that, are we? We're going to put the, we're going to put a forge intercooler, which I'm assuming is this. Forge intercooler is in there. 
and that's going to be sandwiched in between the two. So this is the stock yeah, intercooler, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's the stock intercooler. Right, so that's coming out, and the forged one's going in, yeah, and then the pull new... That, pull that on your Yaris. All oh, right, sweet. Yeah, I'll do that, actually. Fit straight on, you see. <laughs> All made in the same factory. <laughs> Ran into a little bit of a complication. That should be welded to that, but it snapped, which has caused this to catch on the fan at the front. Uh, so, I need to find an aluminium welder to sort this out for me. There we go. Pipe. All welded, bracket back on. Hopefully that's at the right angle, I've no idea, but it looks like it'll fit. The new Forge intercooler looks amazing. The quality of them welds, we see a lot of stuff these days, exhaust particularly, and some of the welds on the exhaust and stuff, you think, mm, not great, but that intercooler looks phenomenal. So there we have it. It looks like the front end is pretty much back on. We've got a new air con compressor. We're gonna do a gas of the air conditioning to make sure that all works because there was a pipe down there that was split in case you missed that on a previous video. Otherwise, just headlights, bumper. So I know with the intercooler that this did have on it, you guys were like, oh, it's the best one to have. It's front mounted, but it absolutely butchered the crash bar, which obviously isn't very safe. And it didn't look great. It was pushing the front bumper out as well with the pipes that come around here. With the Forge intercooler that I have, it's been designed specifically for this car. And that is exactly how God intended it. Perfect. It looks a million times better straight away. I can't remember whether we had an under tray or not. I don't think we have, so I think we need to get one of them as well. The new struts we've got that are over in the box just over there. So they'll be going in there with the new springs and stuff. We've got the ABS sensors, which plugs into somewhere up here. And we've got the light headlight level sensor, which goes up there somewhere as well. So yeah, get it finished today, mate, yeah? So after a while of pleading with Greg here, I finally managed to get him to do the shocks before five o'clock. So we decided to go with ST suspension, which I think was about eight, 900 pounds, something like that. And uh, hopefully it'll be a miles better ride and performance than the stock suspension. The new and improved Evil GT. That's what this is. Uh, the dust covers on the back brakes, the discs, we've got them here. I've had a bit of a brain wave. I think I'm gonna paint them black because the last lot rotted, hence the reason why we've had to get new ones. So I'm gonna scotch these back, paint them black, what do you reckon? This is Cerakote. I assume it's some sort of ceramic coating. That's exactly what it is. Blue is in the tire, I suppose. Serico completed, certificate, nice one. They're absolutely perfect, look at them, all black, shiny and new. So a job for me when I get this back to the unit is to replace these, these have completely seized. So we bought a new set of rears that are nice and shiny, new and red. So they'll be mega when I get them on. Gotta be honest, I don't think there's gonna be much on the back end of this car that's not gonna be new. One little bit of good news with this car was that the front and rear discs are practically brand new. I also want to get the fronts refurbished, you can't really see them all that well, but the fronts need refurbing definitely because they are a bit of a pig's ear, they look a bit rubbish. But there's about a two to three week wait, so what I'm probably going to do is daily it first, get it nicely running, and then send this off before we get it tuned. Well, it's still moving, that's a result. Doesn't she look good? Still need to get the spoiler back on it, definitely needs some wheel spacers. How's it feel? All right. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got 13 mil spaces on the back and 12 mil spaces on the front. I think, my opinion, it will probably rub, but at least it looks good from the side. Look at how this sits now. That to me is absolutely bang on. Beautiful. So you've still got to sort bits out like this and get the, the rubber trim in at the top of the door and the spoiler and the front bits on it and stuff like that. But, I think you'll agree, it is starting to take shape now, this car. So once it's done on the geo ramp now, I'm gonna get it back to our unit. We'll replace the rear brake calipers because they're seized. I'll take the fronts off, get them refurbished, painted red with the Cupra, up the spring clip, the retaining spring clip on the front. And there's a couple of other bits and pieces I need to do. I need to clean out the interior because that's dusty from the body shop. And uh, yeah, so there's still loads to do. Jed, as everyone knows, I like the, the fast race car setup. Is that all right? Yeah, so we'll just smash a load of camper and yeah, yeah, on extra it. race car is what I want. Well, it'd help if you could drive like a racing driver. <laughs> Look at that, the lads are professional. Have you done this before, you? So we're going for a little mooch around. The air conditioning works, that's a good start. Look, it's on low and it is actually really cold. Feels good. So that'd be good for some road trips abroad. How does the clutch feel for a start? Feels all right. Does it's it? Not, it's not too heavy or... 
bank that, point isn't too bad. That's good news. Feels firm in here, I'll be honest. It actually feels good. I can't believe the engine's back in. Driving, no locks and binds. Steering wheel straight. Feel good? No, I'm not good. I definitely want to go there once it's done. Once it's done, yeah. 400 plus horsepower. Yeah. And it's making good turbo flutters. <laughs> So there we have it, the Cooper is back home. There's plenty more to do on this. Cleaning the interior, sorting out the bodywork, as in putting the spoiler back on, the side skirts back on. There's a repair that I need to do with the skirts. They're still at the body shop. So yeah, loads still to do, but she's back here and I can crack on with this myself now. And the first job today is dropping the first lot of running in oil. And that's because it has to have fresh in, ready for the thousand miles or so, proper running in before it gets tuned. Now that that's done, I've dropped the grill off at the body shop. That's there getting repainted. I've already prepped it and sanded it down. That's going to be repainted. I can't put that on yet, but what I can do is the interior. And as you can see, it's a big job. There we have it, interior looking miles better than it was before, much better. Still needs a good upholstery clean on there I think, I've got as much of the dust up as I could, wipe the door cards down and things, looks mint. Work is stopping on the Cooper just for now because I'm going to give my mate Dean a hand at Arcade. If ever you need an office fit out, this is the man. All kinds of different stuff, stud walls and whatever else. He's helping us fit a little brew station. A bit of a bench that I can get my tools on and stuff like that. We've got the plugs up there already. So yeah, Dean, Arcade, make sure if you've got an office, ignore all of this, that's for a friend. If you've got an office, he's your man. Ain't that right, Dean? Aye, aye. <laughs> Freshly painted grill and side vents next. There we go, she's actually starting to look like a car again. Scuttle panel's on, the trims down the side of the windows are on. I put the wing wipe, window wiper on because that had snapped off the old mechanism, so we put a new mechanism on. The front end is on. I have ordered a chrome badge, that's not here yet, so I know I'm probably gonna have to take this bumper off again. They're in, they look mint. Uh, we ordered fog lights, I know again, I'll probably have to take the bumper off to put them in. Reg plate's on, so now it's time to tax it. I'm going to take it for a run. Now, you probably, the eagle-eyed viewers of you probably had a look and said, right, where are the side skirts? Because they're still not on the car. Or the spoiler. So the spoiler we're redoing because the paint reacted. It went a bit weird. So we're redoing the, spo the spoiler, but the side skirts are completely knackered. The tabs have all snapped off. I was going to have a go at trying to plastic weld them myself, but it looks too big a job. So I found a brand new set in crew. I think that they're for the British Touring Car pre-facelift kit not for the K1 kit, which isn't ideal, but they look almost identical. I've found a pair, brand new, unpainted with the covers, because they're a nightmare to get, for 200 quid, and they're in crew, so I'm gonna go and pick them up, and that is a great opportunity to take this car and get some running in miles done, because we need about 800 to 1,000 miles to run it in. We've already done the initial sort of keeping the engine ticking over, getting it up to temperature. I potted from awesome to here, which is only about 10, 15 minutes away, it's not far, so, Everything seems to be fine. I dropped the oil, I put more mineral oil in, fresh, fresh oil filter. Fingers crossed it does actually make it to crew and back. In true Evil GT style, things have not gone according to plan. I was actually leaving the unit to go and pick Lee up, to go down to crew to pick these side skirts up. As I got to Lee's house, or just before, I got stop engine immediately oil pressure warning stop 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 beep 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 so i'm currently on my way to take it to awesome gti hopefully it's something or nothing my rs3 actually when i changed the factory oil out for millers my rs3 came up saying oil pressure warning hopefully it's something like that because it's got mineral oil in it and it's not got you know the proper oil that it should have in it fingers crossed the oil pressure sensor is just a bit like oh this isn't right and it's not actually getting starved of oil. I mean, knowing my luck, doing what I'm doing now, there you go. 
it's coming up again. Well, awesome and technical tabby have saved the day because he said, and I saw it, the oil is coming out of the oil pressure switch. But when I say coming out, I mean it is catastrophic really. It is drip, 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 uh, coming out fast. So I've ordered a new oil pressure switch and an O-ring. I don't know if I need the O-ring, but I've ordered it anyway. That should hopefully be here tomorrow. It's an overnight job. And uh, I'll have a go at fit fitting it myself, why not? Now, because of where it is, it's difficult to show you the oil pressure switch. But you can see the connector just there that we've unplugged. And it is soaking in wet with oil. And that's obviously what's been causing the oil pressure fault saying stop, stop, stop. There has been oil pressure, but because the switch has been getting wet, which is this bit, I think it's called intrusion. So the oil is coming through, literally through the switch. And you could see dripping out the connector. I am at awesome still, because it was better than taking it from here back to my unit to potentially have to bring it back if I can't do it. So I'm gonna have a go at it. And there we go. We're out. There is the old oil switch. We'll replace it for the new one. Clean out the connector on the other end because that is obviously still really, really wet in there. Apologies I've not filmed that, but I'll be totally honest with you, I couldn't even see it with my hands. So you definitely wouldn't have been able to see it with the, with the camera, but it is like right down under there somewhere. I did clean out the bit that connected into it to make sure, a bit of brake cleaner and air, blasted it out a few times. Bone dry, should be, fingers crossed. Bang on. Today is a good day because it is a day of fixing stuff. Tabby has fixed my ABS controller tabs. Explain to me, what have you just done? Uh, we just changed the coding to suit the current setup. Because, um, because I found was, some paperwork, it says for a 4x4 or something. Yeah, yeah. it was off a, a different vehicle, so the coding within the control module was different, so we've just sort of extracted You've that. You put in. some letters and numbers into, what was that, VCDS or whatever uh, The VCDS on the, on the the coding on that one, yeah. We are light free. We are light free, which I think that's the first for Evil GT. Usually this engine light's on of some description. We've also flashed like a very, very basic stop map on with very, very low boost just while we run this in. So the engine management light should now be off because he has coded in the fact that it shouldn't have a decap. We're good to go. So there we have it. I'm about 10 minutes down the road. Still no lights, no oil pressure warnings, no engine management lights, no traction control lights. Everything seems to be going well. I've definitely just jinxed myself, but who cares? I'm now driving a car that's got no warning lights on it. So as I mentioned before, I'm off to crew. I'm gonna go and pick up the side skirts that I found for this car. Brand new, unpainted, 200 quid. It's a good opportunity to put some miles on this as well. So let's get down there. As you can see, the side skirts are in. I've not had a look. I've, I trusted the guy. I've just been to his business, his warehouse. So I'm assuming they're legit. Uh, if we get them back knowing in true evil GT style probably half a side skirt or the covers will be missing or something But fingers crossed we're all good. However, even more importantly than that the car is still going strong fine I've done I think about 82 miles in it now maybe 100 miles I think it was just before 87,000 miles and it's done 87,000 in 82 miles so if we say off the 87,000 we've done 82 miles and it's going strong. We are back at first class in Newton Here's Sean, Mr. Happy, as we uh, as we call him, and we've got him the new. Obviously not in there. We've already <laughs> got one out. It's just up there. But these are the new sills side skirts that are like a brand new primer. So you haven't even got a primer them, but will you still primer them? Yeah. So he's going to paint them obviously the same colour as this. Hopefully that's going to take a few days, and we can come back, pick them up, get them back to the unit, and get them fitted. So the next stop is Danny at Wigan Bag Parts because I've got some leftover bits for him off this car. And he's hopefully got some bits for me. The destination is on your left. There we go. We have the under tray, because we're completely missing that, which is great. And I've also already got the chrome badge for the boot lid, because the one that's on it is black. I'm never going to be able to sand all that off. And the chrome one, I think, will look miles better. Back to the unit. As you can see, there are a few more jobs to do on this car. I bought the rubber seals for the doors because the ones that were on it were like wavy. We also have, from Racing Line, a new, brand new, shiny new intake. So we'll get that fitted. We've got an under tray that could do with a bit of a clean and the new boot badge because factory was the idea. One good thing, engine, they're running in 
I think we're nudging now, gotta be 180, 200 miles and she's going strong. First job done, I think it looks miles better. You don't realise actually these seals, the difference it makes to the outside look of the car. Well happy with that. Next up is our shiny new racing line intake. So, I know what you're already thinking. Has Ben fitted an intake before? No, is the answer. So I've had a quick look online. It doesn't look too difficult. I'm gonna try and roughly work out based on the intake that's on it. And fingers crossed, it doesn't take me too long. We're in. The design of this is quite a lot different to the other one. The other one sort of ram air come round this corner and into this gap here, but then had no direct feed to the air coming in. Whereas this one is attached to the colder air. So hopefully this does perform better when we come to start kicking this car's head in on the dyno. I'm sure you've all heard a racing line, but if you haven't, awesome GTI got everything there you would need for any VAG car. Thank you very much to the guys at Racing Line, that looks absolutely incredible. And I would say it probably took me about half an hour, 40 minutes, which actually ain't that bad. Next up is the under tray. Now because this car didn't come with an under tray, there's no speed nuts in here. That's the new arch liner, because that was missing. And obviously I don't have the bolts to bolt this in. So what I'm gonna use is probably one of the best purchases I've ever made is some plastic clips which will do the job until I get the proper speed nuts and bolts for it. Now that is an Evil GT bodge, I do apologise. However, I don't have the speed nuts as I've just said and uh, that is the best I can do. Up until I do have them, so yeah. I mean it's in, that's not going anywhere, it's definitely not coming off, but I would much rather it have the proper screws and Speed nuts through the side, but there we go, under tray, fitted. Rules that leaves is another 800 or so miles running in, which you think is dead easy, but when you're driving other cars and you're doing jobs on other cars, the Focus, the Porsche, it's harder than you think, but hopefully we can get that done. We can start thinking about getting it tuned, at least. And never has this phrase been more relevant than now. In true Evil GT style, it's not gone well. Went home, you can see, I was about to go home for the day, start doing some social media stuff, and uh, well, yeah, I don't know if you can see all that on camera, but it's pretty wet. Come up on the dash saying coolant, warning, stop immediately. I've just had a look at this and because I'm an idiot, I've caught this pipe here. And I've, uh, this pipe just here and I've snapped that out of there, as you can see. So coolant has been absolutely spraying all over the engine bay, pretty bad. Now I'm back at Wigan Vag Parts to get a new one. And there we go, the infamous piece of coolant section. I snapped the bit at the top. Danny has just very kindly sorted me this out. Just pulled it off an engine, job done. Back to the unit. And by the way, can I just say, if you are a fan of the channel and you're not subscribed yet, then please do hit the subscribe and the bell. Thanks very much. So here's the bit in question. That's the bit that I snapped. It's obviously just in there. You can see it just there. So hopefully I can get that out. It's not gonna to be too much of a big job. There we go, we're out. Not the best design if I'm honest, that's really, really thin plastic for that top pipe. What Danny at Wigan Bag Parts has very kindly done is left this pipe on for me. So what I'm gonna do is, that looks absolutely sound, I'm gonna just take it off from here to save risk in trying to get this back onto that and that off there and snapping it again, so. I know what you're going to say, uh, I have had a look and Danny did tell me actually at Wigan Vag Parts and Jim, they do metal ones of these which obviously make it a lot harder to snap this little bit on top but I don't have time for that, I genuinely don't have time for it, I need to get this car running, I need to get it to the body shop to get the spoiler back on it, the side skirts back on it and just generally get these miles, these running in miles done because it's only done about 200 miles, we need another 800. I have also bought some new fogs which are just in here. New fogs for the front bumper and a new chrome badge because the rattle can one looks a bit rubbish. And I know what else you're gonna say, here in Evil GT, who'd have thought we were about to put chrome stuff back on our cars? I 
was just having a little look about to see if I could do it easier than taking the whole bumper back off again for like the third or fourth time. And it looks like I might be able to actually get to, you can see that gap up there in the fog light up there, but I'd need to move the under tray that I fitted yesterday, thinking that I was a genius with these clips and now it's probably gonna be a pain in the ass to get it off. And in true Evil GT style, they don't fit. Uh, they're the wrong ones. I've ordered the right ones, even though the company who I bought these off on eBay said, yeah, yeah, they're definitely the right ones for your car. They're not. So I found a different set with a different company that do have the right screw holes in that I need, and they should fit. Right, next up, I've got to go and fetch the fitting kit from Awesome so I can get the side skirts on this car at the body shop. Just to sprinkle a bit more Evil GT style on it, some of the bits have arrived, some haven't. So I can't fit the side skirts. I can however fit the spoiler, so to get the miles on the car anyway, I'm gonna take a trip up to the body shop and get the spoiler on. Go on, go on. Don't look like that, lads. No. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Up a bit, down a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. looks about bang on with the brake light there. Right there. I kind of already that. spied that up that bang on We need some tape and stuff. So I have already been complained at because I technically shouldn't be driving this car but I am running it in so I'm not driving it like a lunatic. We should be alright. I haven't got time for it to go off though. It is what it is. I've got to go. If anybody finds a Cupra spoiler on the M6 as I go back to my unit, uh, it's mine. Old. Can you please uh, bring it and give me a shout, thanks. Next up for the Cupra is some fog lights. Nothing special, just fog lights. That was definitely easier than taking the whole bumper off. The, the screws at the top, which are like up here somewhere, both sides, absolute pig to get to, but they're in, and already it looks miles better. I suppose the only thing left to check now is to see if they actually work. Now work it. So now that the front end's pretty much done, we've got the shiny new, freshly painted side skirts with the glued in jack caps because they either fall off or get nicked all the time, so they're glued, so they shouldn't come off. And the spoiler is on, and it's not come off yet, down the M6, which is great news. But I hope you agree, that is starting to take shape now, that car. These clips look like the worst design I've ever seen in my life. They're like folding half, and then that, that bit there literally just sits in the sill, in the seam of the sill. How does that not, how does the bottom not flap around? <laughs> That's as far as I got. Uh, there's no way that you can do that on your own because you need like one person either end of the skirt to start with. I can't put it on my ramp which would obviously make it easier because it's at sort of like chest height. It's then in the way where the side skirt's got to go. So I just rang Sean at the body shop and said is there any chance you can help me out? He said yeah but I'm here at six in the morning so be there or don't bother. You know when you have one of them ideas, right, and you think, oh, it's a dead good idea, that. Well, this is a shit idea, and it started off a shit idea. Half oh, five in the morning on a Saturday, go to the body shop for you lot. Well, he's here, because that's his van. I'm sure. So we're back at the unit now, and I think you'll agree that looks absolutely mega now. With the side skirts, it completes the look of that car now perfectly. Looks brilliant. So there's a few more bits to do. There's a few more bits on the inside. I still need to clean the seats because, well, they're just disgusting. And I also need to put the A-pillar trims in. Uh, focus, there you go. So you can see the A-pillar trims. I need to put them back in, which is a two-minute job, hopefully. Um, the other thing to do was... These back brakes, the calipers, are completely seized. So currently, my handbrake uh, doesn't work. So I'm leaving it in gear everywhere, which on my little street outside my house is a bit of a slope, so that's not ideal. So now, I'm gonna try and get these off and replace them for some brand new pads and calipers. So what we've gone for is a light for light replacement. This is a TRW caliper, which is exactly the same as what's on the OE. Probably can't see it because it's been painted over a million times. But this has got to look miles better anyway than the one that was on it. And in true Evil GT style, <laughs> uh, I've broke the pipe. And I bet he's any money, Greg at Awesome GTI will say, I told you to make sure you ordered some before you started messing about with these back brakes. And I thought to myself, that nut's coming off way too easy, that's easy, but it, what it was actually doing was twisting the pipe until the pipe split. So luckily, 20 past 10 on a Saturday morning, I was panicking a little bit that I wouldn't be able to get this done and I'd have to leave the Cooper here and maybe take the Focus RS home, which isn't a bad thing. However, I've spoken to the guys over at VBT 
and they have very kindly said that they'll make up a piece of flexi, Hell Performance Flexi, with the correct connectors each side, so I'll be able to completely get rid of the hard piece, which is common for snapping anyway, so I'll be able to just go straight from the bottom of the caliper up into the main brake line, all with one piece of flexi. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I have tried everything to get that nut undone, everything. I've soaked it in WD-40, GT-85, I've tried an 11mm slips, a 10mm won't go on it, I've tried mole grips, I've tried literally everything to get that undone, and I can't. Now that pipe runs underneath and clips onto the rear subframe, as you can see, and then it comes out the passenger side and connects to that. If I can get this one done out of there, and I take that to VVT, they can make me up a set of a new copper line that runs across, but this has turned out to be a massive job. So we've got all the bits, so yeah, fingers crossed they can measure and make that right, and I need to get the carriers off here as well, because I want to get them cleaned up and powder coated so that they match the new calipers. So the guys at VBT have said, instead of doing metal lines, they're just going to do the whole thing flexi. We'll still have a couple here, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but, effectively, this is going to go straight from here. No, where's it gone? Me old. Oh, here, with a banjo. And then it's going to come round here, go up to here to be a flexi to a coupler, and then that's going to be flexi across the back of the car to the other caliper. That's the plan. Whether it works out's a different story. <laughs> this here is now going to replace this metal bit, hopefully. You've definitely cut it to the right length, haven't you? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> this ain't going well. So I managed to get this brake line off, but going from the flexi, which obviously was going into the this bracket up here on the caliper, then down into the hard pipe into the caliper, it's connected to this just here. Now that I have doused in GT85 and all kinds, and it's it's literally seized to the pipe. So when I try to undo that, it's twisting this, and obviously if that snaps, then I am in trouble because that runs the whole sort of length of the car. So <laughs> what I've done is, because, well, quite frankly, I'm a genius, is I've mithered the hell out of Kieran and Dean at Vagbren Technic. So Kieran in the end just turned around and went, mate, I'm coming to your unit, I'll see you in a minute, I'll sort it out. Thanks, <laughs> Kieran, for coming. He's left it to me to try and take it out. So wish me luck. Now what I'm doing here is, because I'm very lazy, is making this really awkward for myself and not moving the intake that I fitted the other day because I don't want to risk snapping that coolant piece underneath there. So hopefully I can get this spanner to it and undo it. There we go. One brake line out of the car and it is, well, other than possibly this little bit here, that is pretty much bang on to the shape as well. I've not distorted anything at all, so hopefully I can take that to the guys at VBT and they can make me a nice shiny new copper one that is going to be a lot easier to fit. And obviously it'll be this end, because that's knackered. That's the one that we see, so yeah, job done. Next job now is getting the carriers, the calipers on in place. Now amazingly, there's one carrier built up. I say amazingly because genuinely, I completely forgot how that come apart, so putting it back together again was um, a little bit difficult. I muddled my way through it, but I've greased these pins up, I've cleaned them off and greased them up, so they're all good. Obviously tying them up there. Um, you'll notice, I mean I'm colour blind, but I can still notice the two different shades of red, but it is miles closer than it was before. It is what it is, that is fine. So that's the driver's side done. Um, I think that caliper now that it's on, I don't think it's that bad. It probably looks a bit worse in real life, but like I say, once the wheel's over the top of it, I don't think you're gonna see, and obviously it's gonna be covered in brake dust half the time. But anyway, one thing I don't know about just yet, the handbrake cable looks like it's got quite a bit of, I don't know whether that should be sort of like quite tight up against that, I'm not too sure, but obviously I know that pulls that in once you pull the handbrake up in the car but yeah you guys might know comment i don't know how to adjust this if there is an adjustment because it does seem to be like surely that shouldn't be that hard to take out i don't know anyway it's in looking good onto the side there we are passenger side caliper is on looking good we have the replacement brake line bag rem technic dean and kieran rescued saved the day out of copper pipe and um, they specifically asked me to not tell you that they 
can do this, so I'm specifically not telling you. But yeah, they definitely said, don't tell anybody that you got it done here, um, or we did it, because we don't want to do them. ABS end is in, not that you can see it down there, only you kind of can down there. I reckon that was probably the bit I was worrying about the most, because it's so fiddly and I've got to try and get it up the back of the engine and stuff. The other end, fingers crossed, isn't going to be anywhere near as bad as that, and that was fairly easy. The other one we sort of bent a little bit trying to get it out, so this might not be perfect, but because it's made of copper, it's nice and soft, so it should be fairly easy to manipulate and get obviously up behind the heat shield up there, and hopefully, up into the flexes and into the caliper, the two-tone caliper. I'm not exaggerating when I say that I can't believe how easy this is going so far. Handbrake is connected back up this side. I don't know if that still needs adjusting, probably does. Um, this I've got tucked away behind there because it is a little bit too long a copper, so I've just got it hidden behind there. Um, this may sort of move around a little bit, I don't know, so I might have to sort of secure that up there somewhere maybe who knows but you guys last time I did the banjo thing let me focus that in on the banjo thing um, you said make sure you've got a washer both sides crush washer thing whatever they're called and I have professional now me boys and girls girl uh, so other side oh I need to run the line that goes across the width of the car obviously which I've got just over there just over to the left and then uh, yeah connect that then to the flexi this side and then I'm good to bleed up. And finally, this car will be back on the road. Fast forward a little bit of time and I've realized where they were supposed to go and route to and with that little retainer clip there. So I know I said this, this side, I'd sort of tucked it up in behind the wheel arch, but I've done it properly now. You can see that it, it's properly rooted and uh, yeah, that ain't going anywhere. It's not moving, which is good. Cause obviously we only do proper here on Evil GT. We even say proper words. Uh, and I've done the exact same this side as well. So uh, yeah, that's rooted. Banjoed, two washers. Fingers crossed when I go to bleed this up, we have no leaks. I've recruited the Curb Assassin. Look at this. All right. Yeah, he does, things, he, life, he does come out in public looking like that. <laughs> Dad, my dad's gonna help me bleed this because I don't have one of them pop things that you pump up and fill up with the brake fluid. So you're gonna get in and pump the brake for me. Is that all right? Yeah, pumping up the jam. Yeah, yeah. Are you up now, yeah? I'm up, yeah. Down, up. I said up, shout up. This is what I'm dealing with here. I hope you're getting this on camera, Lee. Right, okay, I think he's sussed it out now. Are you up now? I'm up. Gordon Bennett. Down, up. Pedal getting better? Well, it will do, but is it getting better? Right, that was the question that I asked you. Soft lad in the driver's seat, you can't see him, but he asked me to tell you that he does know what he's doing. Ain't that right? Yeah. So the brakes are all bled up now, that's all perfect. I have still got to get these off at some point to refurbish them because they look, well, rubbish. Uh, but it's going to take a couple of weeks and I desperately need to get the miles on this car. So I'm going to do that first, then tune it, and then I'll probably get these off once all that's done and get these looking just as good as the new two-tone red back calipers. But next up now is the cover, so I've got to get the cover on this near side that runs front to back, that obviously covers them brake lines, and I've got to get the engine cover tray underneath done. You make someone a good wife one day, you. Whatever, just said. <laughs> got myself an apprentice. I was doing this when you went to even cut <laughs> You need to stop swearing, we've stopped swearing on this channel now. Stop swearing? Yeah. That's no good. Comes in handy that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so what I need to do is work on this a bit more. I know I've got one coming, but I need to work on it a little bit more. Makes a job of putting wheels on a bit easier. So I've got the new back brakes on, new back calipers and pads. I thought I'd let my dad have a go. Hey. You've driven this car before, are no. you up? Steady no. on. We're gonna go for a little, just a little spin, make sure everything's all right. And uh, I'm pretty sure it will be, because I've done it. It's oh, gonna be bang on, is it? How heavy? Yeah. Do you think it's heavy, yeah? Yeah. Lee said that, and I didn't think it was that bad. No, it's heavy. What's it feel, anyway? It's all right, yeah. Good. A bit slow because you've got to stick to the uh, yeah 3,000 RPM. 3, RPM. We're running her in. We're taking it gentle. But otherwise, the ride's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Brakes all right. I'll do a brake. I'll do a brake. I mean, you don't need to minute. go. You don't need to go mad because they are brand new pads on the back. But um, we just need to know that it stops at least. I mean, this is a red light though. There we, there we go. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Happy with that. They they work. Yeah, yeah. Clutch works just clutch, about. Clutch, clutch is uh, one of them Australian kangaroo clutches, isn't it? <laughs> 
It is a huge eye, but it put your window up, man. Now, I reckon I've had easily two, 300 messages, comments on YouTube, messages, Instagram, Facebook, asking where Leroy is. We are at Leroy's house. So, as you can quite clearly see, he started mowing his own lawn. Not bad. What will we rate him out of 10? Put it in the comments. The man, the myth, the legend. This guy's got the Rona. Oh, you've had it. You're on the back end of it now. I am. Feel yeah. a bit better, mate? No. A bit fragile. You don't. No. A few beers will sort that out, though, won't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm with you, so <laughs> definitely going to be some beers, aren't we? <laughs> Look at this seat. What's up with that? Crap all over the place. The seat's not even clean. Look at that. Well, I, I went to borrow your little upholstery cleaner and you took it back off me, so I didn't have a chance yeah, to do it. You had it for a month. <laughs> Come on, mate. Here he is, Victor Meldrew. <laughs> So before we go on with today's video, I just want to explain where I've been in the last few weeks. Not done any videos, obviously Ben's been doing them on his own. I've just been busy with other stuff. Yeah, I've just not had the time to do it, so... But you must agree that he's doing fine on his own, doing all the videos, and I'm still editing the videos for him, so... Ben's filming, I'm editing, it's actually working better now, doing that, than it was before. So, I think we're just going to carry on doing that. Are you okay on your own? That's fine with me, mate. I'll come in my view to get in some videos going forward, so don't worry about it. Have you got a bit of a problem? Yeah, we have. What is it? I don't know, but I've got no, no powers. Let's try second gear. Where we go? We're back, we're back, we're back! She's alive, don't worry about it. This, can you explain what that problem is? <laughs> so, um, as far as I'm aware, it, that's the worst it's ever been, by the way. But yeah, um, it's had it's had a runner flat delete. But because we just needed a quick rudded in map on it, they completely forgot to uh, map out the actual flap things. I don't know exactly what all that means, but it means that it sort of like my foot is. Pops and bangs. We got some pops and bangs. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but yeah, I think we're going to struggle here today. This is going to be fun. So Ben says, um, do you want to come on a road trip to Wales? And I was like, yeah, go on then. It's Sunday. Nothing else better to do. Oh, thanks, mate. And he's... That's quite right. <laughs> and now he's like bringing me in a car that doesn't even work properly. There's still a few running in miles it needs to do. And um, we're nearly there now. We're pretty much done on the, on the miles that it needs to be running in miles. So we thought, what better way than to get him in? And to go on a bit of a bit of a road trip through Wales. It's not too far away from home. And um, so, how many miles are we doing? Where are we going? I don't know actually. So, what we're actually going to be doing is following a friend of ours who's just bought a new car as well. He's organised this route, um, and this route is actually going to be. <laughs> you right there, mate. Um, is is I'm planning and thinking about doing a road trip at the end of August on this same route, same hotels, same route. So. Um, you'll have to let us know in the comments if you'd be up for it and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can sort out for you. So this road trip will hopefully be added a few more miles to this car. Once they're done, that's the running in done. I'll drop the oil, new oil, oil filter and it's time for tuning at Awesome GTI with Ben from OEM Plus. And I reckon we go for about eight to 900 horsepower on this with about 900 newton meters of torque. I think that should be easily achievable based upon all the work he's done on it. What do you reckon? I reckon it'll be, you know, it'll comfortably sit at that, no issue, and all through the front wheels as well, it'll handle that, no problem. As usual on this channel, I haven't missed the fact that things do tend to go wrong, and whilst I've been gone, nothing's gone wrong. So I must be the bad. You're the kiss of death. I, I am the kiss of death because... And you sound like it as well. Yeah, <laughs> I've got the COVID. So this is causing problems down here. And I don't know, 200 miles road trip. Is it actually going to do more than 20? Actually, at the moment, it doesn't seem likely, does it? Because it's sort of like coughing, spluttering, and you know, it's not, it's not going well. No. Oh, it's a cloud! Yeah. Come on. It's cutting out now. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Off. Putting it in neutral. It's off. Battery lights come on. Is this actually cut out? 
back. We're back. I'm back. We were down at we were down at No Revs. The engine had cut out. The battery light come on. Why is it popping and banging? This is on. So it's a this is a factory map that we've um, we've turned the boost down on. Obviously for the running in. Listen to it. It does sound good. It sounds really good. But it just needs to you know knock it on the head now. We've got an engine management light on. That oh and the EPC lights just come back on. And off. So people might think that we actually want this to happen. On this particular occasion, on a Sunday, driving around Wales, we just thought we'll just drive around Wales, nice, nice, legendary drive, <laughs> with a couple of pops and bangs, <laughs> and it'll be fine. It'll be a good day, and we'll, you know, get to wherever we're going. But something tells me that ain't going to happen. But at the moment, it's sort of going all right. We're keeping up with Cyan his GT3 RS, and let's be honest. It's going to be boring in that car, driving a GT3 RS around Wales. I know, yeah, that, I mean, who'd, who'd want to do that, really? Surely you'd want a three and a half grand, say, at, it'd be, uh, say at Leon Cupra, um, that's coughing and spluttering and giving you a bit of issues and stuff. Surely you'd rather have that than a GT3 RS. I wish it was three and a half grand. <laughs> More like 13 and a half grand. <laughs> it is now, yeah, it's expensive. Comment, what do you reckon we're at now? It's got to be, it's got to be over 20 grand, surely on this car. Easy. But it's definitely over 15. I know that for a fact. I mean, the engine, <laughs> little things like the, you know, the engine. It's a lot of money. And the engine. <laughs> and it's still... Just the engine. Just the engine in general. It doesn't work it's expensive, properly. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. The engine. I mean, we've spent... No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. We spent probably five figures getting the engine started out and all the other stuff with all the arms and all the stuff that he decided oh yeah let's get the suspension done let's just blow the budget and it you know it drives perfect now i mean it's such a lovely sputtering drive yeah it is this is so right for you you know it handles really well plenty of grips yeah it's not as grippy as that though no definitely not as grippy as that so is it money well spent uh, at the moment, no. But once it's tuned and it, you know, it drives properly and it doesn't have engine management lights on, um, then I reckon it will be worth it. But more money needs to be spent until then. It's gone. It has gone. Yeah. Happening, mate. Well, the police have slowed right down. I think we are in a 30 anyway, to be fair. But Sid, he's been driving rather spiritedly in his GT3 RS. But the police haven't seen him, I don't think. But now they are sort of, it does seem like they're, they're having a good look. Is he, um, has he got a front number plate? He doesn't have a front number plate, no. But I think it is in his windscreen. Anyway, it's the, uh, the Welsh police, anyway. Are they, are they real police, though? The head loose. You know, are they, are they actually proper police? I don't know. I don't know. They might be. I don't know. First stop. Rouge Estate. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. R-H-U-G. But this would be the first stop on our little drive out over the weekend. Should we do this at the end of August? My plan is to do maybe two and a half days, uh, finish up with a bit of a meet um, at a farm which is better than it sounds, I promise you. And uh, yeah, that's the plan. Surprised it's made it. I am quite surprised after that. Yeah, the engine, man the, the engine management light is now on permanently. But uh, yeah, I'm well, pretty surprised. Be cars if it wasn't I know, well this is, on. yeah, it feels at home now, doesn't it? Yeah. We have the most angriest GT3 driver ever. He's just he's just an angry man in general, isn't he? Bless him. <laughs> very, very frustrated. I don't know, I don't know what could be causing that frustration, but he's just a very frustrated man. I don't think he likes all these bikers, does he? <laughs> no. Look at his exit. And he used to have a bike actually as well, didn't he? Yeah. It looks like we've got every two wheel vehicle out on the road in front of us today. Whose stupid idea was this to do? To do this today, of all days. I mean, there's thousands of motorbikes. Look, they're Look all, they're as far as you can see now. 
So that's completely ruining our road trip now because we were hoping to sort of, you know, move down the road a little bit sprightly and we're currently stuck at 38 mile an hour. Still got an engine light though. We have, yeah. Luckily the engine light is still with us. That's where we're off now. We're gonna do a big loop through Snowdonia and uh, yeah, all them places that I can't pronounce. Dog, Dol, Dolgaloo, Dolgalau. What, how do you pronounce that? Dot. Dol, Dolgalau maybe, Dol, Dol, Dolgalau? I have no idea. But anyway, yeah, two minutes later, the bikes have gone, we can crack on. So we have got a little bit of drama here. Right? It looks like it, that definitely looked like a police car. Well, it looks like. Oh, there they have pulled him over, pulled him over right, as well, we missed around. it. Come on. Uh, well, where do you want me to turn around? Oh, look, before we go, um, is there anything wrong with this car? Uh, no, What's not that I know of. Are we legal yet? We're taxed, insured, MOT'd, we're all kosher, we're good. It's going off. What's, What's happening? Right, Bit of drama. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Big credit to Porsche Leicester. The service guys, they just haven't ordered the plinth. So obviously I've not been able to mount the front plate. I chucked the car like that on the reveal, you see it, with the plate in the window and he's just said, look, it needs to be on the front. Now normally they'd be like whopping out hundred pound fines, wouldn't they? But he was he, quite sound. He's let you off. He's let me go, yes, sir. Just said it needs Well done. Needs a plate. Well done to the undercover Thanks, BMW. Mate. I don't well, say well done to the undercover BMW, he almost caused an accident, right? Because he was so desperate to stop me. But I did overtake him doing about 80, so he could have done me for that as well. 80 kilometres an hour that was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> For anyone that follows me on Instagram, which is not many people to be fair, but um, I did actually get pulled with the McLaren with no front number plate and I got fined a hundred pounds. The angriest GT3 driver has just been let off a hundred pound fine. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. I bet it. he's anybody, it's because he got out of his car, he's like, oh, sorry, oh, so sorry, oh, oh, sorry, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use that excuse next time. I've just picked the car up yeah. and... Um, it was Porsche's fault. It was Porsche's say fault. That, when they pull you over in your McLaren, you're going to say, sorry, yeah. it's Porsche's fault. Hey, why not? <laughs> road we've encountered and there's one reason for that and what is that reason uh, there's no cameras exactly yes overtake why do you get around there <laughs> easy mate <laughs> get right through there it's not you driving now you know you get around there i'd like, get around it the guarantee is nothing will be coming from that way the guarantee who's Gu guaranteeing that and the bikes they can move out of the way can't they yeah, yeah, they don't take up anywhere near as much of the road then. Next opportunity we'll go, we'll get past the Dacia. Right, you can go now. <laughs> He's going anyway, look at that. You needed to overtake him. <laughs> Thank you. They've let you. Yeah, they have. <laughs> you know, they'll be like, oh, this lad in his Cooper ain't going to have the power. Have as well, they've come back on the road. How many people do you reckon have been through there? A lot. Let's not make us the next ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this road though. It's good, the coupe handles well. I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed. And I can't go that fast, obviously, because I can't kick its head in. Otherwise, these tyres are good. It's the first time I've had good Jerry Eagle F1 Super Sports on a car, but they're, um, they're handling quite well. It's like being on the Nürburgring, not knowing if it's a left or a right. You know, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a meerkat. Send it over the hill. What's the worst that could happen? Over the hill and far away. Yeah. So that's um, about 130 miles done today, 960 in total, so 40 miles off the, the running in, and then we can finally go and get it tuned and get all this horsepower out of it. We can, yeah. Early 400s we're after, but what I've got to say is, ever since the engine management lights come on and stayed on, the cars actually ran better. So that must be an evil GT thing. You know, our cars have always run fine with the engine management light on, haven't they? Yeah, we've never had an engine fail. Exactly. Don't say stuff Not like this that. One. <laughs> Don't say stuff like that. That was already failed before we got it. It right? was already failed, yeah. So now we put it back together and it seems to be alright, but who knows? Hopefully it'll be okay. Well, you said you always wanted to go to Dol Galau. Did I? Did, Did I, I say that? Yeah, you, I remember you saying once. Okay. And now you've done it. 
Are we here? We're here. Officially? We've, gone, we've, gone, we've just gone past it, really. It feels very dog Yeah. Next stop is yours. Well, hopefully. We've got a long way to go. He's in the way, isn't he? He is in the way, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, five reasons. Then. <laughs> I don't you know. Can't slam on the brakes. Oh yeah, no, I can't slam on the brakes yet yeah, because um, you guys quite rightly pointed out that I'd rooted the in the comments of the video that I'd already put on. I'd rooted the brake hose incorrectly because it was quite long and it actually was catching on the inside of the wheel. I've got new hoses. They're actually underneath your seat. You've got new hose. I've got a new hose. Yeah, in different area codes. Um, but I can, I've not gotten round to actually putting it on yet because I've been working on the Focus ST, the RS. Um, so, yeah, if, I reckon if we go too hard on the brakes, it could end up bursting the brake hose this side uh, and that could be catastrophic. Premium ESA 92 <laughs> Ron Fields. Do you reckon that's what it is? We're going to be filling up in the middle of the road. Do you know what? We don't even need to. I don't need any fuel. We all right, yeah. yeah, we sound well, 95. That is, I'm not putting 95. 95. No chance, no thanks, mate. But I've got like what nearly two thirds of a tank. We're right, fine, so we've done 150 miles, yeah, and we've only used a third of a tank. Pretty much, when this car goes up for raffle, it's not only going to be mm. amazing, it's going to be fuel efficient as well. Well, not with over 400 horsepower, I wouldn't have thought. No, it's probably running just over 200 now, so I would say it's probably going to be a bit worse on fuel by the time we finished with it. Detuned as well. Yeah, Detuned. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's only. Maybe it's not even 200. They've not even got a turbo on it now. It's just NNA. It's all the driver, mate. <laughs> it's all about the driver. He's got a certificate for that, hasn't he? He's got, oh, hasn't he got a driving certificate. You, you know he's got plenty of certificates. He's got loads of certificates, mate. Everything's going, been going fine so far, but now I've let Lee drive, <laughs> and we all know. I mean, he wasn't even driving it, and he gave it the kiss of death before. So now. This is not going to go well, is it? We've already started off with the light. What have we got there on the dash, mate? EPC, what does that actually mean? I don't know. Who knows? Engine performance. Calibration. Something like that. <laughs> Do you reckon this sounds better and is faster than Sidi's GT3 RS? Well, we it's know it. obvious that it's this obvious. is the better car. Of course. <laughs> Obviously. Do you know why this is the better car? Why? Because that costs probably in the region of 150, 100, 260 thousand pounds. And this costs. £16,000. If this is 10% of the enjoyment of that, then it's about even, but I reckon this is 11% of the enjoyment of that, which means this is slightly better than that. I'll Only take just that. Only a little bit. I'll take that all day. That's, that's cracking, that. So now Lee's driving, it's probably a good opportunity to be able to tell you guys about the road trip that I've got planned 25th, 26th, 27th of August, the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We've got two hotels booked. We've what? got go-karting booked. I don't think we're going in this. Oh, we're not going in this. Oh, is this broken again? The EPC <laughs> light's gone on again. Oh. And there's absolutely no throttle. No, it's back. But if you're interested, email me info at evilgt.com saying I'm interested and I will keep all of you guys updated about where we're going, what we're doing. It's going to be in Wales. We're going to be staying over in Wales, probably a night out in Chester. And um, yeah, a bit of go karting. It's going to be class 25th, 26th, 27th of August. Email info at evilgt.com and let me know if you're interested and we'll get something organised because it'll be class. How much? I don't know yet. Right, Lee, have a go at saying that. What is it? Siop Fak. Siop Fak guard you with Bon Gollan. What are we saying? Have I nailed that? Sidney in his uh, GT3 RS 
He's miles behind. I mean, that's embarrassing for him, really, isn't it? We're oh, running yeah. this in. I've got to slow down now, I'll be honest. <laughs> So what are we saying? Well, apart from the lack of power, which is not all the most, yeah. I'm actually really enjoying driving it because it's just something a little bit different. And driving a car without like a thousand horsepower yeah. is actually quite refreshing because you have to work this car a little bit more to have a little bit more fun. But yeah, for I know it's not finished yet and it's down on the power, but this, when it's got 400 horsepower, is gonna be spectacular. But I like it, it's good. Well, that's a result, at least we know it's not money wasted. We're on the hunt for some good fuel for the GT3 RS because he put about 30 quid's worth of 95 in it before. He wasn't best pleased. How are we doing for fuel, mate? Uh, where's the fuel gauge? There's a massive bit on the left-hand side that says 165 miles uh, there, mate. Got a full tank. <laughs> <laughs> and also this car cuts out. Oh, quick. What? Quick, you're gonna have to, oh, you've got going. no power steering. Oh shit. <laughs> right, yeah, so it keeps cutting out with the uh, with the flat delete, but now City's got a now City's got a Porsche and it's bright yellow. He's just like, no, I'm not moving backwards, mate. You lot are gonna have to move backwards. You know, pushing a GT3 along. It's what, it's what we do on Evil GT. This is what happens when you come out. This is what happens when you come out on road trips with, you know, pedestrians really, amateurs, <laughs> unbelievable. And when Siddy watches this back, he'll be like, you bunch of daft <laughs> shut the up. <laughs> well, we've got the engine light back on, by the way. Oh, brilliant. You got loads of grips then? Oh, loads. Loads of grips. <laughs> Oh, that was a big pothole. You've not got that much grips. Really went into the bushes then. It did. Straight to the George W's. Oh, oh. 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 I think the spacers <laughs> are not very good. The spacers are gonna have I don't think I don't we got no tires left. I know. I don't I'm... think we're gonna have any wings left either. No, no way. <laughs> It's good fun though. I'm no expert, right, but I'm not entirely sure that these people here should be facing the other way on a go karting track. But, uh, yeah. Hey, tell us why we're here. Come on, tell the audience. I'm shocked. What? I'm shocked why I'm here. As one of these daft people, just come down here stopped and then turned around and gone the, other, the opposite way and then turned around and then someone's come around the corner and whacked him and he's gone into the fence. Right. Why are we actually here though? Um, well it's karting isn't it? It is go-karting. Siddy you tell us why are we here? Well, I thought we were go-karting. Are we not go-karting? No. I'm up for that. I'll smash, I'll, smash I'll, I'll Mate, him who keeps on going the wrong way. I'm going to hit him. <laughs> I'm going to hit him head on. These pair are useless. The reason why we're here is because we're planning on coming here for the trip at the end of August. Now it's my turn in the GT3 RS. I've only ever driven one of these once. It was for about 20 minutes and I fell in love with it. And it was upsetting because I knew I'd never be able to afford, well, I knew I definitely now can't afford one. Maybe, <laughs> never say never. Neither could I, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I would go with your sounds better only because that's been turned off. <laughs> so we're at the first stop. We're going to stay here overnight, have a few beers, maybe a bit of a spa. You up for that? Did you bring your speedos with you? Have you booked some room? Have I booked one? Yeah. I have for me. Have you not booked one? No. Well, that's awkward. So, yeah, has you not bought your budgie smugglers either? Yeah. Happy days, let's get in a spa, lad. So, we just got a standard double room last night. And as you can see, you don't get a bad view at all. This is absolutely beautiful. Didn't really get to see much of the hotel last night. We got here, had a few beers, something to eat, come to bed. I'm about to go and meet the lads for breakfast at 7 o'clock. I think it's about 10 to now. So uh, get back on the road, over to Port Maddock. And from there, who knows, we're following Si. Day one done. That's a cold start on a GT3 RS, in case you're wondering. Well quiet, but day one done. Hotel was really nice. We're about to leave. I think we're going to Port Maddock. Let me check with City. Show sure it's Port Maddock. Where are we going now? 
Port Merion. Port Merion, is that the same as Port Maddox? It's close, yeah, it's not too far away. We had a bit of a nightmare with this yesterday. The engine light's on, that's not good, because that went off yesterday, now it's back on. So uh, hopefully, she gets us to Port Merion we're going to, mate. Yeah, I know it well. <laughs> what have we got left? We have 125 miles left, which is about a third of a tank, this is saying. So there's plenty of fuel, but we'll fill up anyway. We've done about 200 miles yesterday. Something like that, yeah, give or take. 180 to 200. So the car just cuts out randomly. Stop, start. I know, yeah. I'll take the key out now. How difficult is it when you go to the petrol station to get the pump off and put it back without wrapping things round each other? Overall, are you actually enjoying the um, the car? I think it's brilliant. It's a shame that you can't obviously kick its head in, but I think it's really good. It handles really well. I'm impressed with these tyres. First time I've put Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersports on a car before. The tyres feel really, really good. So, yeah, well happy with it. Faster than 70, uh, 60, sorry. They did it? Yeah, it felt real fast. It's mad that. I think it's because there's so many trees, you know, when stuff goes past really yeah. fast, it gives that weird perception that you're going faster than yeah, yeah. What, you, what you actually are. This could be like Austria or it somewhere like that. Stunning, this. I mean, this is Wales. I mean, it, it's 22 mile an hour, I know that. You're nearly in the back of side. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, look at the views. Mile an hour. Beautiful. Real nice. In the valleys. Yeah. So this is one of the roads we're going to be doing the road trip on, yeah? It is, definitely. So. Just hopefully not behind a lorry. Come on, car! Yeah, boys! <laughs> We've made it! <laughs> this road, though, is amazing. This road is amazing. I don't know what's coming up here. This is a bit blind. I'll just send it. <laughs> Oh no, it says slow down. It does say slow down. I didn't oh. know what was coming then. I could have just sent it. We've arrived at Port Merion. Port Merion, Merion, Merion. Is that the same as Port Maddox? Is that the same thing or not? It must be close. We are close to it. But anyway, a bit of a sit rep. We've still got the engine light on the dash. We have. We've used an eighth of the tank. Yeah. We've been driving for about two hours. So this is the most fuel efficient car we've ever owned without a doubt but it is also the slowest so um <laughs> so <laughs> the two probably go you? hand in hand yeah we're just on port marion very nice place we'd not filmed it but um the car park is now the car's just made it about 10 10 foot down the car park and it's cut out it has cut out however but, the engine light's gone back off yeah that's why it's cut oh, out oh i know yeah we need the oh it runs rough when the engine light's not on we need the engine light back on <laughs> So it's the last leg now, Port Marion to Chester. About two hours, 50 minutes, which will be the last bit of the road trip. It will and be. Hopefully it makes it. No, come on, car. No, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Bedded in now, you I would say that the clutch is bedded in now. Yeah. I would definitely say so. This is such good fun, this car, you know. I mean, I'm so tentative anyway, because I don't know where I'm going, but it's great fun. And I'm still not really wringing its neck, hitting the limiter or anything, but the suspension's a little bit soft for stuff like this, but obviously, you know, for day-to-day for -day driving, it's good, it's really good, it feels good. These tyres, really impressed with these tyres. It gets a little bit light over the back end. Turn in, come on. Want 
some better pads there's not much feel quite spongy but they whatever pads come on the car but you know it's good it's good fun are you enjoying yourself yeah probably me mate <laughs> Why have we stopped here? Oh, it's a beautiful this is, place. This. this is stunning. Have you seen a, somebody's house down there by the looks of it? <laughs> That's some gaff, that, isn't it? So I always thought after doing road trips for the last maybe two, two and a bit years that you had to go abroad to do an amazing road trip. But this place is maybe an hour and a half from the northwest. This reminds me of a mini version of maybe the, the Stelvio. Stelvio. This is like a little baby version of that because it's not as windy, but you're going down the hill and everyone's doing, what, 12 mile an hour? <laughs> It's exactly the same. <laughs> That's more or less it, end of the road trip. We've done about, by the time we get back to Chester, it'll be about 400 miles, which puts this on about 1,200 miles running. So it's a case of getting it back, getting some oil drop, new filter. Job for you and one of That is a job for me. Massive amounts of certificates. Easy, yeah, you know, dropping oil and putting new oil in, new filter. Easy peasy for me. Man of my calibre now, Easy. no danger. Uh, first video I've done for absolutely ages. Um, and yeah, it's been good. I've um, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed being in the Cupra, you know, sending it around, and it's still going. She's done all. Yeah, we did. It was it was touch and go at one point, wasn't it? In yeah. fact, a few points in this road trip, but otherwise, I think it's performed really well. We know for definite that I need to sort out the marches. I need to roll the roll them arches in. Um, otherwise, it's bang on. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing, liking it, and the bell, that kind of stuff. This was a bit of a recce tour of a road trip that I want to do at the end of August, beginning of September. If you are interested in getting involved and coming along, then please do email info at evilgt.com. Just send me an email, just to say hello, count me in, whatever, and I'll put you on the list. And then when we've got a bit more information and we've got cemented dates, I'll email everybody out who's emailed me and let us know if you want to come. Just a little ending to the video. We thought we'd finished. The car's just cut out three times. Yeah, it did. And we're about 10 minutes from where we need to be. Um, is it okay now? Maybe it's not the end of the video. Oh, you are joking. Come on. Stop it now, enough. <laughs> we want to just end this video and get home. This is not the place to break down. No, it's not. I mean, at least we know eventually it starts again, although that didn't start then, did it? That is the first time it's not started again. <sighs> Come on, what do you want from me? We've yeah. kicked its head in for two days solid, that's probably yeah. why. Yeah. It's getting a bit upset. So, apart from the fact that it is absolutely filthy, but we have just got back from Wales, the road trip where we've done three or 400 miles, ready for its final oil change and stage three at Awesome GTI in a couple of weeks time. <sighs> well, I found an issue straight away and that is that this, that we got aluminium welded before we put it back on because it had snapped previously. You can see the new weld just there uh, and it snapped again. Now obviously it sits a bit too far forward and it'll catch the fans. Obviously it's not a massive job to take it off, but I think we're just going to need a new one because that bracket looks like it's just going to keep snapping there. So whilst the oil is draining out of there, I'm going to see about getting these rear brake lines off. So there we go, that is off. Now one of you guys did actually say, watch where that is rooted because it looks like it could catch on your wheel and well, yeah, it did. So the ones we've gone for now are ever so slightly shorter 
the kink in the little sort of connector bit, the banjo bit at the end is slightly different and now it fits absolutely perfectly as you can see. So it loops up, we can't get it through the original hole because obviously the connector either side of this is too big to fit through here but it goes just over, it misses the handbrake cable, plenty of room there and it goes up into the original connector. Well no, it's not original anymore because we replaced that as you know. But yeah, that is miles better, miles neater, nowhere near the wheel, perfect. It's absolutely nowhere near the inner edge of the wheel so much better, well happy with that and now I need to bleed the brakes again. Now I realise that this doesn't say Miller's on it but this is Miller's 1040 I think, nano drive. Now because I'm a cheapskate I, uh, it was cheaper for me to get the millers straight out the barrel from Awesome GTI by about 15 quid than it was to actually buy them in the pre-done bottles. So I asked Johnny P and the little legend had a spare oil bottle here that was completely empty. We filled this up with millers and I saved myself some money. So yeah, that's the reason why it's not got millers on it. So there we are, oil change done, filter done, brake lines done, job done. However, I do still need to bleed the brakes because obviously we've lost quite a lot of brake fluid there. I'll get that sorted, but then the car is ready for its stage three checks. That's happening in a couple of weeks and then the tuning just after that. I've drafted in a bit of help because my new um, brake lines that I put on the back of my car, I needed some help pumping it up. So you know how to do that, right? I know how to pump it up. <laughs> all bled up thank you very much to Chris Mr Slicks if you've not already subscribed to Chris's channel I'm sure you would have done if you watch ours you probably do uh, because he's got much better content than we have <laughs> when it comes to like fixing stuff properly I know how to bodge a car perfect well uh, we could get on yeah. quite well here then not that this is bodged all right this is obviously just very dirty so when we bought this car a little while ago our intention was to buy something and see if we could make it 400 horsepower for less than £10,000, but this particular car, although we thought it was going to be a good idea and a good project, this had other ideas. And those other ideas were under there. This engine, cylinder one, was losing 100 psi, which obviously meant this could not be tuned, especially not to stage three, 400 plus horsepower. So I came to see these guys, our good friends here at Awesome. There's the gaffer and the other gaffer. There's the two gaffers together there to see if we could do anything with this car and the engine. And what they suggested was, Ben, it's got to come out. And if it does come out, you may as well build the engine. And that straight away meant that our budget was probably going to be blown. Which has meant that the budget has been completely blown. But hey, this car has done 18, 9, 90,000 miles. And it is literally like a brand new. And by the way, if you've enjoyed this series, subscribing to the channel and following us at Evil GT Cars on Instagram, will make a massive difference and help the channel loads. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a day that we have been waiting for for ages, hey? <laughs> a good friend of mine who's got a hairdresser's car just here, a fast one, but it's still a hairdresser's car. Um, but this is a day that we've been waiting for for ages. This car is now coming in for its stage three checks to make sure that it's all above board, it's all safe and healthy, ready to have 400 plus horsepower shoved up its backside. Now, I have just got to address you guys when you were saying about getting a Civic Type R, was it like an EP3 or something, I don't know which one it is, um, and saying you should have just got one of them and strapped a turbo to it. But the thing is, that could very well have possibly been less than 10 grand, no issue. But what happens if the engine wasn't great on that or there was some other mechanical fault on it? This car, had the engine been sound, we could easily have done this for less than 10 grand. We still probably could have done, even with the engine issues, but because we knew it was going to be over £10,000 with it, we thought we may as well just do everything else that we can see to make this car as good as we possibly can make it. Do you know what I mean? So that was the reason why it's ended up costing us easily. I think the last count on this car, it was nudging 20 grand now. Easily nudging 20 grand. And I think the bill alone from here was 12, 13 from Awesome. We obviously had the paint done, that was 1,500 quid. The wheels and tyres were a grand. Oh, there's loads of it, so. We are gonna run through a series of tests just to make sure the car's healthy. Um, obviously, you'll see what tests we do as we go. Yeah. Uh, I think this is 
what it failed last time, wasn't it, on the compression? Which... Yeah, cylinder one compression, yeah. 100 PSI down we were. So anything less than that I'll take, mate. Is that all right? <laughs> now, the only thing that's worrying me a little bit is I know what Tabby's like, right? He will pick holes in everything. It, this could be a brand spanking new car, right? Brand new, out of the factory, rolling off the production line, and he'd go, well, that's, that's, that's not right there, that's not right, that clip. Uh, that, that hole shouldn't be there and honestly he's terrible so I've done the oil and filter change on this and no doubt there'll be something that ain't quite right although looking at that I'm happy with that there's no leaks at all from the sump which is good that is good and there's no leaks coming from the oil filter housing which is also good eh? so far so good Tab it's supposed to be hanging on what's supposed to be hanging on oh yeah that's snapped again I forgot to tell you about that so now we've established that the underside of the car is literally like a brand new. I've done absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever. Everything is perfect. We're going to check the top. Ain't that right, Tab? And this was the one we had the issues with. Cylinder one. So fingers crossed, that is all hunky-dory now. Impression, I missed that. You was way too fast for me. What were we saying? So, all good. All balanced. Really? Yeah. So. Yes! Well, that's a result because that, obviously, you know, we have machined out the block or the cylinders to fit half mil oversized Wassner pistons in. But knowing our look on this channel, for those who may be new to this channel, literally anything that could go wrong usually does. So I was expecting there to be some other compression issues or just something that wasn't quite right with it. But Tabby is saying, I apologize, I missed that. But uh, Tabby is saying that no, compression is bang on. We're all good. What are you doing here now? Pressure testing me turbo or something, what are you doing? Pressure testing the inlet tracks to make sure there are no leaks. Are we all right for back pressure? Back pressure? <laughs> is me, is me, me pressure that We're whatever pressure you're doing up there? The inlet pressure for pressure, pressure any testing leaks. me inlet. Yeah, was to make there any sure leaks? when you fitted these hoses that you've connected them I, correctly I and there was no that leaks. Was, that was Smiler oh, over there oh. that's fitted me hoses, mate. Oh, I'm not okay. fitting well, any that, hoses. That's why there's no leaks then. Oh. <laughs> That is good news. So, so far, so far, so good so with the far, news. So good, yeah. So I have the Cooper back at the unit now, and in true Evil GT style, this ain't going to plan. The throttle keeps dipping out, as we've mentioned on previous videos. I assumed, basically, literally me presuming, that it was because the runner flap delete thing and all this kind of stuff. It's nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing to do with it. I've spoken to Tabby. He's had a look at the codes in the ECU, the stored, the stored fault codes. And it's looking like there's a cam position sensor fault, which one or two of you actually mentioned in the comments, and also an engine speed sensor fault. Now, he doesn't know whether the cam position sensor is causing it to sort of like cut out, which in turn then is bringing up the engine speed sensor fault or what. But basically, I have ordered, well, not ordered, but I bought two second hand ones from Danny at Wigan Vag Parts, and I'm hoping that if I fit both of them, it'll fix the issue. I don't have time to be messing about with this because tomorrow, Tuesday, this is supposed to be 400 plus horsepower. Now you guys will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that sensor, if it focuses just there, is the cam position sensor, I think. And the sensor just in here, this one, is the engine speed sensor. I could have just got that and completely the wrong way around, but that's what I'm going with. Now, the issue that I've got is I don't particularly have a lot of time, so I'm going to have a go at the one that Tabby thinks it's more likely to be. Hopefully it's that. If not, I've got the other one anyway. And hopefully, if it's not the first one, it's definitely the second sensor. Fingers crossed. Now, worryingly, the one I've just taken out, which is this one, actually looks newer, I think, than the one I'm about to put in which obviously, as we know, is the second hand one. It's because I could get it quick and cheap. However, one thing I have just noticed is the one I've just taken out has like the OEM stamps on it, the VW Audi badges, but the one I've just took out doesn't, which is very strange. So whether this is an aftermarket one and it's just been playing up, I don't know. That's coming out. This one's going in, although it looks older. Fingers crossed, it does the job. That was minging. So fiddly to get to, to try and get the thread started. I'm sweating in here. I think, it, well, it's 30 degrees outside and this is a tin shed, so God knows what it is in here. That is in. I'm not gonna change the other one because I am actually curious to see what it is that is the problem. So I'm gonna take it out for a drive now. And fingers crossed we're sorted. Now, so far, so good. I've left this ticking over whilst I lock the unit up and it's still ticking over. And you're probably thinking, yeah, so? What's the big deal about that? But actually, excuse the fans, it's red hot. But actually, this used to just conk out. Ticking over, it felt a bit sort of, a bit rough and a bit weird, and it just like randomly cut out, but it's still running. 
and it does seem to be ticking over nice so I'm gonna have a little drive it tends to only do it when you're trying to maintain a speed if you if you're sort of going through the gears and you're, you're moving along quite quickly it seems to be okay but as soon as you like just maintaining 40 in fourth or fifth whatever it's then when the, the literally the revs just go like that off and there's no power at all you can stamp on the throttle and nothing happens so I'm gonna have a little drive around I'm gonna make my way to awesome GTI as well because I want Tabby to just check it over and have a look as well and uh, fingers crossed that sensor has sorted it out so about five ten minutes up the road I'm on a dual carriageway I'm in fifth maintaining about 45 mile an hour and this genuinely is where not every single time but more often than not it would just the revs would just go and it would just it's like zero revs and I'd have to roll and try and turn the engine back on and all kinds of random stuff but so far we seem to be okay now another thing I've noticed which could be completely placebo I don't know but the difference in the engine it seems to be a lot smoother the engine seems to I don't know just be really nice to be honest as opposed to it's quite lumpy before and a bit sort of yeah I don't know I'm uh, yeah, it may be completely in my head but thank god it's not dipped the revs it's not sort of cut out the engine at all at this point it's been completely fine and I've been driving exactly how I knew he would do it before Tab I am not one to blow my own trumpet yeah. but I think I fixed it I just it? need you to confirm do I make a good apprentice or not I've got a job uh, I mean, in installation purposes, I guess you did the job, didn't you? But... <laughs> yeah. So the Grim Reaper's going to have a look at my car now, and fingers crossed, we're all good. Before where it says cam actual, so cam adjustment, intake B1 actual, it was saying, what was it, negative 60 odd? Negative, it would go intermittently to negative 65, yeah. And that's the, the point where it's cutting out? Yeah. Right, so I'll keep... I'll keep the uh, camera on there so you can actually see it. It's obviously this co column just there, but at the moment. So another five, 10 minutes out with Tabby and it looks good. What are you reckoning? Yeah, I think we've cracked it. I think, we? We, yes, exactly <laughs> we. To be fair, you told me what it was and I replaced it. Yeah, so yeah. that's fair enough. <laughs> Today is a good day and I'm going into this with a positive mental attitude. Today is not gonna be in True Evil GT style. Today is gonna be epic. And that's because our Mark II Leon Cooper K1 is finally getting tuned. And that means only one thing, you've gotta to come to this place. This place now is incredible. This is the new reception area, new coffee area. This is where our leash usually sits. And obviously this is where the workshop is. And today is a bit of a dealer day, but I'm hoping to gate crash it with a bit of Cooper, Troon, Cooper Trooning. This is Awesome GTI's new lounge for their dyno cell just over there. And it's absolutely unbelievable. So whilst the guys are gonna be strapping my car down on the dyno, I might treat myself to a, a ginger beer maybe. So whilst the guys are setting the car up on the dyno, I'll tell you a little bit more about the engine just here. We have a forge intercooler, racing line intake, R8 coil packs, and there's washing rods and pistons. The engine's been completely took out, stripped down, rebuilt, put back together, all new bolts and whatever else that they have. We couldn't be any better set up for this to be stage three. Oh, took down the back, it's a TT 480, so all the compression in the cylinders is fine. There should be no excuses for this to make at least 400 horsepower. Whilst the Cooper is being strapped to the dyno, a friend of ours, Mr. Lee from Leeds, the other Lee, this is the Green Lambo Lee. For anybody who's not watched the road trip videos, this is the other Lee who also had his car took off him. But he's bought a Yaris GR. I've been dying to have a go in one of these. They look epic. This one, was it 900 miles? About 38,000 pounds or something? No, this is the other one. We're gonna buy one from Toyota Macclesfield at 38,995. Um, we went over last Sunday and the salesman were just I found this one on the Auto Trader, and the gentleman wanted 36,500 for it. I actually paid 35,500 for it. How many miles has it done? 18 now, but it had done 14. Does the drive live up to the expectation? Oh, very much so, yeah. It's good fun? Yeah, brilliant. Can we go for a quick spin? Yes, sir. Let's go. Is it a uh, rev matching? Like it blitzed the throttle. Yeah. That's class. This car is um, is so good. It's so so good. You would never in a million years think it was just a, a 1.63 cylinder. I want one. 
that's so impressive that I mean at 30,000 for a high mileage older one maybe 37 38 for a lower mileage newer one down to 27 grand now yeah, yeah. The cheapest ones down to 27,000 pound which for something like that is an absolute bargain right I've literally left you alone with my car for two minutes and trying to blue smoke coming out of it your car my car yeah it's my car whose car is it this is my definitely my car this I've been daily driving this car have you paid for it no, no, have you? You can give me some money if you want. <laughs> this is my motor, this. Oh, I can swap it for your GT3 if you want. Keep that. With Sat the Cooper, as you can see, we have Ash, who helps me with the mechanic stuff. I, well, basically, I point him in the right direction. He does a bit, you know, this and the other. Ben here, who calibrates, so I'll obviously have to help Ben next. And then we've got Lee, who's hiding behind me. Just a hand. Uncle Leroy there behind. But anyway, can we, oh, shall we guess what this is running now as standard with the wherever this base map is it's got? We guess. I mean, whatever it is. Whatever it is. is. What it's is the it? one I've specifically written exactly for you, Ben. With, with, with no boost. Yeah. With no it, boost. Probably got about 200 horsepower, I reckon. What do you reckon it is horsepower? 250. 250. 237. 237. Yeah. I reckon it's more than you think. Really? I'm going to go 251 to cover. Anything above. Well, they were only two. I only cheated. I just bratted them up. You shouldn't even be asking him. He knows the fingers. I know. Well, they were only 240 horsepower when they were brand new. Yeah, but it's got a massive yes. blower on it, even though it ain't got much boost. Right, okay. Well, it feels like. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm disadvantaging myself by telling you all my tricks. Yeah, here, right? yeah, definitely are. Well, I thought it got about 200, maybe 210 maximum. For the purpose of the project, as long as it starts with a four, I'm not particularly bothered. It just needs to be 400 and something. Otherwise, you'll have spent 20 grand. For, well, absolutely no reason, really. So run this is one, a, this is run one base, run one completely base, no configured booster, just wastegate boost. <laughs> what are we saying? I don't think you're gonna like what I've got to tell you. What is it then? Is it broke? Apparently, it's 295 horsepower. Stop. Oh. I, I knew it. It went well. 295. No That's chance. Apparently what it is. There is absolutely no way this no. has got... Edgy. What? That means we can get 500 now. Gotta do, and it? <laughs> it's how it works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just have like a hundred new meters then. And this is the problem, your relationship between torque and RPM. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and horsepower. 295 horsepower is reasonably good power now. Brad didn't think it was anywhere near that. And you get so used to driving cars with more power that when you get into something that's got good power, you think it's not. Not only that, I've just realised that I was the furthest away from the base run and Ben was the closest at 251 horsepower. So, so far, I owe everyone a breakfast. So that there explains why this doesn't feel, to me anyway, particularly quick. It's the, it's the torque in a car for me that, will, that gives you the sensation of, of the power, the push that it gives you. And obviously that at 365, 370 newton meters, is what's making it not feel very fast to me, although it is nearly 300 horsepower. I don't want any pops and bangs, please. None no, of that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't map any of that stuff in. The little burbles when you, you know, when you let off, the little bubble, bubble, bubble. I, I quite like that. That's yeah. cool. Right. Seeing though Ben supposedly built this, which I know is not true. Yeah. He's watched it being built. He might as well tune it, eh? I may as well. Pass me that laptop. Can't be that. Do you want it? Yeah. What do we do? No, no, I don't know. Why are you taking the radio out? Go on, Ben, you're probably best off explaining. I've got a communication issue on the OBD. So we're just going to pull this out, make sure that's not interfering with any of the communication. Yeah, somebody commented the other day saying, oh, this Cooper is taking way too long, this project. By, bearing in mind, it's been on four months, that's it. It's had engine hour and all kinds. But this is, the, this is what we have to put up with. This is what we have to deal with. It's that's not just as something. easy as just going, oh yeah, it just needs tuning now. Never that easy. We're messing about with edge units, for God's sake. I think we've cracked it. I don't know if it was directly related to the head unit, but we've unplugged it anyway, and now it seems to be working, so who knows? You don't look that bothered, you've got a donut in your hand. Well, I've had no dinner. I'm absolutely starving. Uh, and these were going spare from the dealer day, so I thought I'd help myself. You need to stay off in a bit. Probably do, actually. I've been good lately. No one's noticed, but I did. I have lost a little bit. Only a little bit. Oh, you're having a look at Proper, proper trip. Mm. I'm gonna go and show these wet wipes up there how to do the gym anyway. Oh, mate! What are you messing about with that for? Right, okay, snatch it now. <laughs> so go from a deadlift into here and then press it. Let's see you do it then. No. <laughs> Lee, what are we saying for the first 
first flash. 395. I'm gonna say 360. Did you look at the junction then? <laughs> no, I don't to be honest. With you. I didn't do my mirror signal maneuver, mate. You're right. Got, you're absolutely right. Mirrors, you? Use them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> didn't do my shoulder checks, no nothing. And you're already on four miners there. You know why, don't you? Well, fully qualified truck driver, I don't need to follow their rules. Yes, do what you want. Oops. I don't know. Well, there you go, you see. So that you know you don't get like loads of power from that little bit of boost. Yeah. Well, you said you turned it up by 30%. Yeah. Let's go 130%. I reckon that's a great idea. 130. 130%. Yeah. 130%. I love more than 100% and anything, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, more than 30% more than the maximum. Absolutely. That's what we want. It's just the right amount. <laughs> that's the way we do it, man. Oh well, yeah. You know that. Full send, they call it. Yeah, yeah. they do full send, and that's the reason why we break shit. <laughs> I think I've just realised why they might be. Um, I mean, we might be low on the horsepower. Why? Right. How's that? The other day, when you said go and fill it up, what has there in it? Who did? What has the fuel in it? Well, since then, though, I've fueled it up. But you've not put as the fuel in this car. Definitely. I know you've not. There's no I'll show you fuel in it. Because if it has the fuel in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, it's And then you've just put like, some more on top. <laughs> Yeah. That's not really going to make it any better. Yeah, but on your yeah, but I've heard of your work, and you you. If there's anyone who can tune a car with as the fuel into 500 horsepower, it's you. I don't know. It might be Morrison's actually. <laughs> <laughs> All we're going to do is change the the, the boost al allowed percentage of boost right. on the boost controller. How could you do on this bottom line? You don't need it. This okay. I've done it all for you. Though. Okay. Right, this bottom line here, you yeah. see how it's yellow at the moment. If you highlight all that bottom line there, right? Yeah. And press equals, which is up here, and you decide not 130, <laughs> how much boost you'd like. So, oh, okay, so you're on 30% here. That's and I've put it all across the board. I know that's a really, you know, hokey way of doing it for the moment, yeah. but we just want to see where we end up, don't we? Where we, you know, we've got to get some, some foundation. So we can use Evil GT99, right? And it's, not, it's 99 Ron Fuel, isn't it? Yeah. It's 99 Boost, isn't it? There you go, then. One. Three zero. <laughs> I don't know if it'll do that. Will it let you put that in? One three zero. It literally doesn't. No. It's beyond 255. It can't understand. We've done 30. 60. Let's go 60. See where we go. There we go. I have literally just tuned this to 60% of something. I don't know why. What, what was it? Boost pressure. Yeah, it did the boost control. Yeah. What's the stock boost pressure then? Ah, it doesn't work like that because that's stock, and it all works on the load limiters. So it doesn't actually work as, a, as an amount of boost. It, it works as an amount of air allowed in the cylinder, which I know is a load of rubbish. Based on the other one, at 30%, giving it, what, 15, 16 horsepower, which wasn't amazing, um, this is probably going to be about, what, 325, 30? Yeah, but you say that, that's why I said, what is the base boost pressure? Because if the base boost pressure is around 25%, you turn it up by 5% you've got it mean? by 30 more percent. It might be a lot more then. So Mark, the owner of Awesome GTI, you had one of these, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, about that, yeah, yeah. How much horsepower did it make? 424. 424. So, we need to at least beat 424 and at the moment we're on 311. Right, well there's a long way to go then, isn't there? Don't look. Right? I'm Your face didn't really change a great deal. Do you know why? Why? Because I think it's good to have done two horsepower less. No. That's saying 305. <laughs> and he doesn't look happy. Oh, What's going on with this? This is going to be a long night, this, isn't it? Did it go down two horsepower or, or was I seeing things then? I mean, I don't think, I think we're seeing things. <laughs> it's clear to me that the N75, which is the boost control valve, is not doing what we're asking it to do. Okay. So, despite us inputting 30 and then 60, yeah. and there being no difference between the two, yeah. there could be a difference in the first runs because yeah. we also changed the load limiters and stuff. So, okay. you know, to close the throttle and things like that. So, I have a funny feeling that our good friend Tabby may have left the N75 valve unplugged. Okay. In order to ensure that you had no boost. I vaguely remember this. Right? That one is what we would call a mechanical issue. We are seeing better things. That is 340, 340 horsepower. Ben's controlling the telly in there. Uh, where are we? 340 horsepower we're at and we are 464.67 new meters. And that graph actually is looking much more like it. 
And just as the dominoes have arrived, we've done another run. What did you say? 384. 384 horsepower up to and just over 500 new meters. That graph doesn't look too bad. I don't know what all this is about at the end here, I'm not too sure, but we are definitely going in the right direction. I did notice that one of the runs, Ben, the tour went yes. absolutely through the roof. Yes. We dialed that in a little bit. Um, I went 50% and 75 low down. Okay. It was just too much for it. Yeah. So um, for the moment, I've lowered that back down to 35. Okay. And I'm taping up to 50 in the red line. So I've just come out of the dyno cell now. It looks like the car's misfiring a little bit, which is weird. It's got brand new injectors and it's got an uprated high pressure fuel pump. The low pressure fuel pump's still stock, but apparently that's good for uh, 400 plus horsepower anyway. So Tabby's just arrived and he's stealing me dominoes by the looks of this. What's this here? You've come here to help. Not eat me, eat me pizza. It's not lamb it's day, not is it? Knocking. Yes, it's not fueling, it's not knocking. We've definitely got a misfire. We don't really know why. Boost is not high at all, 1.6 bar maximum at the moment. We have cracked 400 horsepower, we're at 4, 404. You'll be pleased to hear, but it's just not smooth. So now Tabby's going to have the spark plugs out and check the what you're checking the gapage. Yes. The good news is we're now at 400 horsepower. That's the good news, but as you can see, it's uh, it's not happy about it. So it's a very unhappy 400 horsepower. And you can't beat the 424. See you later. <laughs> well, are we done then, Mark? <laughs> yeah, see you later. See you later. I know for an absolute fact you would not allow a car to go anywhere near the exit doors with a graph that looks like that. May or may not be this. We have no idea. But we're checking through things anyway to try and suss out what it is. But it's closed the gap up on the spark plugs anyway. By what did you just say, Tab? 0.2 of a mil. As you can see, that is quarter to 11 at night, and we give up. We're going to go home. Next morning, we have flashed a new file onto that. We're going to start injecting fuel slightly earlier, thus meaning there's going to be more fuel in the cylinder when it goes bang, and hopefully it stops the misfires. It seems that the misfire is only coming from cylinder one. That's the cylinder that we had the 100 PSI compression loss on, and that's worrying. We're going to put coil pack one into coil pack four, swap one and three over, and have a look now, see if the problem moves. Oh, and the spark plug too. Two different cylinder though. That's the one that the coil pack's going in. So Tabby, AKA the Grim Reaper, has literally just said, if the fault moves to two, it's the plug. If the fault moves to three, it's the coil pack. If the fault stays as one, we're doomed. I found out what the problem is. So it's misfiring the cylinder one. Right. Right, the, pen the penny will drop in a minute. Right, you move the spark hold on one, one second, cylinder right. one. Uh, hold on one second. I don't care. How much horsepower is it? 404 with a misfire. So we're into the misfire. Yeah. yeah, and low, low boost as well, isn't it? That's very low boost. Very low boost. boost. So he's going to do 450 with Easy. without the misfire. We hope so. Don't I, think, I think the injectors will. That's, that's why you're here, mate. <laughs> exactly. This is why we've got him. Exactly. 450. Well, we'll see. That's going to be amazing. We'll he's still not he's understood. Not. He said 450. He said it. He still hasn't understood as to why it was actually misfiring in the fourth place. I'm not like into the engines and stuff. <laughs> I'm just like driving them. He's just like driving them. Yeah, with a misfire. <coughs> so that. That's the broken one. That's our problem. Oh. Uh, hold that. No, it's hot. <laughs> in with the new coil pack. So this is the technical side of him. It's in. Doesn't need like the tool to put it back in. It's just his fist. <laughs> She felt clean, that was a nice smooth little run up then. It wasn't a proper one, but there was no sort of coughing and spluttering or struggling. It sounds perfect, so, well I basically fixed it again. Do you know what I mean? There's no end, is there? Let's be honest. Okay, if you're wondering why I've got this top on, I've just done a thumbnail. Um, and in true Evil GT style, I'm literally getting eyes burnt into the side of my head here by Mr. Bossman. Um, because in true Evil GT style, we've broken his dyno. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even discuss it or talk. Did they have any good dinos where this one came from? So we're going to go to Performance M, which is the old awesome GTI, and get on their dino instead, because we know that's fine. Back to familiar territory. The old faithful dino we have run many a car on this bad boy. Uh, ignore the Performance M stickers. We're all about awesome today, even though technically we are now in Performance M, hence all the 
BMWs. We're now running into fueling problems. Fuel pressure relief valve, we have upgraded that, but we haven't done anything with a low pressure fuel pump. The other thing we can do is drill out the feed to the high pressure pump. We could drill out the feed. give us a little bit more. But the low pressure pump is still dropping pressure, so we'll just have to see where we get to. Okay. We're gonna drill that out, make it a bit bigger, get some more fuel into that, and hopefully we're gonna be good. Yeah, that, that's it, whatever you just said. In the world of awesome GTI, if a customer asks for this, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Just drill, drill straight through that. That's what size it is now, and it's going to five mil. If you were to bought a complete pump from like Lover or someone like that, it'll come pre-drilled. You're trying well. to say I've not done it properly. I'm not saying you've not done it properly, but it's yeah. exactly what it's saying. Exactly what it's saying. Exactly what it's saying. So you're saying this is the last ditch attempt of getting decent over 400 horsepower before we have to start changing other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's pretty much where we're at. Right. So let's hope this look, let's hope this works, and then we don't have to spend any more money on engine components, and it makes 420 horsepower. Is that about about right? Uh, I think 420 is non-achievable without the other components, okay. but over 400 right. um, should be. Cannot believe it. Well, listen, it's still not there. One more run. Can you put your foot all the way to the floor this time? Oh, you want it right at the bottom? Yeah, 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 right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been accused of that before. <laughs> See, I said to you, yeah, didn't just, I? I just pressed my foot all the way down. All the way down. I get it now. You know what I mean? 14 years I've been doing this and, you know. So listen, just before we take it out for a drive, now it's at 400 horsepower, I just need to say thank you so much to Awesome GTI to Mark Ash, to Ben at Racing Line OEM Plus for tuning the car for us as well. Tabby, we all stayed late last night till like 11 o'clock trying to get everything boxed off. So thank you very much to the guys. Thanks to Performance M for letting us lend their dyno because we broke awesomes. Thanks to everyone. And obviously if you want a VAG car doing, if you want a BMW doing, anything like that, make sure you check these guys out. That is it on the dyno, 403. It, it's great on the dyno, but what does it feel like on the road, what in the rain? What does it feel like? What do you reckon it's going to feel It's chucking it down as well, isn't it? Yeah. What a miserable day. Well, it is Manchester, isn't it? So, anyway, I think this is going to be amazing. There's the McCann, freshly wrapped. Looking good. There you go. Ultimate Customs. Oh! Great, then. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got windscreen wipers here? Oh yeah. Is that like there something else? Optional extra that. <laughs> oh, it sounds amazing. It's angry, isn't it? Yeah, it's angry, yeah. <laughs> I know it's got 400 horsepower now, but it's the sound for me. That sounds really good. It does sound good. Very and angry. The uh, the traction control's on. Oh, my ABS light's gone off, that's good. Even though the videos have only been on YouTube for four months-ish, it's actually... It's taken about six months to, for buying the car. We bought the car in December last year, and what we're in now, June. Is it six months well spent? What do you reckon? Is six months well spent or £20,000 well spent? Both. Six months and £20,000. I think, at the end of the day, we started off this project, didn't we, wanting to only spend £10,000, seeing if we could spend £10,000 for 400 horsepower. Yeah, well, we spent £10,000. We spent it twice. <laughs> we have, yeah. I think... This is, this is good, this. We could have literally just got the engine fixed, tuned it and left it alone, left everything else as it was, the brakes, the suspension, subframe, paint, wheels, tyres, everything. But we just wanted to create something that was really, really good. And I'm glad I did now because who'd want 400 horsepower with oh, like Oh, hold on a minute. He's glad he did. I'm glad I did. Yeah, I'll give him. I'll, I'll give you the fact that you've done quite a lot of the recent work on your own. Yeah. But who did the ceiling? I, I took all the paint off the ceiling. The ceiling? Yeah, the ceiling. It's not in your house. <laughs> <laughs> I did all that on my own and I've got the video proof. So <laughs> I've done 25% of this car. Are you giving me that? Yeah, I'll give you that. To okay. be fair, it was, a, it was a joint effort. You were there, you've edited the videos. Thanks very much, although you've not been in many of them. Are you going to do something about that now, anyway? Are you going to come and join me, or what? Yeah, I'll, I'll come back for a bit. Well, that's if we actually get off this little road test, because this car now, in the rain, I mean, <laughs> only 400 horsepower, because you've got to say that in this day and age, only 403 horsepower, which is not a lot, but 
I don't think it needs any more. Do you... That definitely doesn't need any more horsepower than that. <laughs> I mean, that, that had no troubles. Um, where's my traction control button? ESP. ESP. There we go. Well, yeah, this. This is fun now. <laughs> That's mad. And the only thing is, I did notice whilst it was on the dyno, the engine moves a lot. I thought it got uprated engine mounts, but I don't think it has. So I think we're going to get little inserts and try and stop the, the bounce. Right. Well, I think it's time for me to have a go now. Oh, God. This is where, it was fun while it lasted, this is where it's going to get broken. So the last time Lee drove this was on the Welsh road trip and although we thought it had got like 200 horsepower, it actually got 300. But I'm a little bit worried as to exactly how this is going to go. Let's see how many gears we can have it spinning. In. There's one, two, three. A little bit. A bit of traction in form. I reckon, I reckon if you hire up in the rev range there, You'd have yeah. got that spinning in fourth again. Yeah, I didn't want to set fire to the uh, <laughs> tyres. <laughs> oh, so, wow, this is... I don't think the traction off is the best thing to do. No. You always think rear-wheel drive cars are the best for fun, but I don't think... I think front-wheel drive cars are equally as fun. Definitely. Because at least with front-wheel drive cars, it's not trying to properly kill you <laughs> because the back end's not trying to... It's just dragging you along, right? Yeah. So, this is... It's a bit more controllable fun, this, isn't it? Dickhead, straight across the roundabout rather than round it. DK61 GKL. I thought we were driving around like helmets. This <laughs> <laughs> is <it> fucking mental. <laughs> what are we saying? This is this is a right lap. Yes. I mean, we're gonna have no tyres left in this way, but this is this is fun. <laughs> this is the, the Seat version of the launch control. <laughs> it's mental, this. Back there is Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sports. Yeah, back there. That we can, yeah, we've left a little bit of them back there. I think we've created what we could only consider to be a right laugh here. Well, Obviously, at 400 horsepower, it's not a monster, but it's a little mini monster, I think. Yeah. It's like, it's good. I tell you what. <laughs> we're actually getting a bit of heat in the tyres. We though. are, we're getting some good grips, considering, by the way, look at this. It is chucking it down. So there we go, that is it. Off we go. <laughs> that car sounds unbelievable. I can't believe what we've created. An absolute monster. £20,000, yes, and let's be honest, we could have probably done similar power, cheaper, but what that's become now is an absolutely epic car. What are you doing here in the unit, you? So I thought I'd come down to the garage to tell everybody about this car, 99 pence, up for raffle on level up giveaways, dot UK, thousand pounds in cash as well. And this car has cost probably well well over 20 grand to, to get it into this amazing condition. This you know, amazing condition. This amazing condition, and it's amazing. And that's not to mention all the free labour that you've done on it. You're about 120 pounds an hour, right? At least 120 pounds an hour, yeah. Well, when you're fully certified like me, that's how much it is these days. You've done the Evil GT Valentin inside. We've done the Evil GT. Well, I say we, I've not done any of it. I've done a bit. I did the roof like way back. You did do the roof. Like I that. months and months that was ago. a big job. You remember what actually has happened to this car? Let's start from the beginning. Go on then. This is the beginning of the car, it right? Is, there. This is the beginning of the car. Right? Right from... It's been painted. It I remember has. that bit. Yeah. We've had some new lights from EM Tuning. We True. Uh, that was with K1 laser etched into yeah. the lens if the camera's picking that up. Yeah. New powder coating on the wheels. Well, and... We bought the wheels, didn't we? Because the wheels oh, yeah. that had them horrific fake split rim. Yes. Wheels that were knackered. We've got brand new tyres on it, it even is. though you've been driving it around for a bit, so they're probably not brand new. But no, I would no, say No, they are. That. They've got Decent four, amount of tread. four and a half mil left on them. Is that about four and a half mil? That's wow. how much tread left four on them. Four inches, isn't it? <laughs> the interior's been fixed up. The seat was all broken up there. It the, was, yeah. The bolster, the bolster had collapsed, yeah. Yep. So MTS sorted that for us. And it's been valeted by this guy here. We took off all the big-ass spoilers <laughs> coming out to her. We did something 
Did something with them. Did something with them. Did something. With Don't them. just point at stuff now and say you've done stuff with them. And the biggest job, the roof had like black paint on it. It did. So they not wrapped it. They painted it. We spent days on that. This is a rare sunroof model as well, and it does all work. Yeah. Well, it's a rare model now because it's prepped by. You, the evil GT. It is. Easy. Also, we put new sky side skirts on it. They're legitimate K1 side skirts. They were well expensive. Mm -hmm. And they actually have what the these. Hell expensive? Yeah. They're 200 quid. Yeah, it's expensive. Is it? Were they right. 220 quid, I think? Right. But that's, anyway, that's expensive. But also, these are a rare, a rare commodity on a, on a Cupra because these always go missing. They even get nicked or fall off. Right. But we've still got them. But don't be driving through witness in it. I'll do my best. You have to at least do 50 mile an hour through witness. They can't nick them. Got a big brake kit. They're Aston Martin Brembos with new discs, pads. And we got brand new calipers on the back as well. So we've got a new grill because that was like chicken wire mesh. So we've got a, a genuine uh, K1 Cupra grill. That was definitely expensive. The ST? The this ST, the ST coilovers, yeah. yeah it's got really wheel good. spaces on it. It sits absolutely perfect. Look at that. Look at this. Do you know what? I'm glad you got to this because when you say this is the best bit, yeah. this is the most expensive bit. This is the most expensive bit. Now, there's not a lot to see under here. I'll be totally honest with well, you. There is. There's an Other than the racing line intake enclosed intake but also in there we've got the R8 coil packs and then we've got all of the forged bits Wasner rods and pistons we've got the forge intercooler at the front um, this absolute beauty is running 403 horsepower and about was it 580 odd newton meters it's not supposed to have 400 horsepower definitely not and um, especially in the wet this is probably one of the most funniest cars to drive because it's completely useless, which renders stuff funny. If it's useless and you can't use it, that's funny, isn't it? Of course it is, yeah. I really want to drive it again now, because I've not driven this for ages. Well, you need fuel, that needs fuel. So shall we go? Yeah. Let's go. Are you driving it? Yeah, Bear in mind, we've only got 10 miles and we need to go to Tesco to put 99 in it. One thing I don't miss about getting in cars after you. It is not that bad. <coughs> Absolutely not I'm, that bad. How am I supposed to get into this? <laughs> This is ridiculous. Right, you need to drive it out like that now. Right, do you think it's my coat? It must be your coat Coats that's added. It's either your coat or your new sneaks. Hold They're on. posh, then. They're posh sneaks, Let then. me take my coat off yeah. and see. Ah! <laughs> Let me take my coat off and see if I can get in. You're going to end up pulling your rip out. Right, cut this bit. Oh, look at that! Are you in? <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, it's my coat. Unbelievable. I thought it was you. It's his coat. Ah, oh, but I can't. It's winter now, so I'm putting my coat back on. I'll just rev it to show everybody you know how it sounds because it sounds really good now there's zero miles left in it brilliant and i forgot as well it's got a new clutch one of those um you know those thingy ones that do you know the good ones and we thought my technical explanations were bad <laughs> Tell you're back in the car. This is an evil GT car. It needs to be driven the way like I'm a Yobbo. It. Yeah, it's got good brakes now. It has definitely got good brakes. Yeah. And it's got a forged engine. The forged engine. So don't forget, if you want tickets for this, the 99p each, level up giveaways.co.uk. I'll put the links in the description. I'll put a pinned comment. Go and get yourself some tickets if you can afford it. Okay. It does sound like a rally car. Not that I've ever been in a rally car, or driven a rally car to be honest, but... Angry, we're doing a left. Lee oh, sense of direction, shocking. Left. Yeah, we're going to Tesco. Oh, Tesco station's down there. Yeah, but that's not 99, mate. I've just been driving it the way I would have got to that petrol station. Now I don't think that I'm actually going to get to that petrol station. Yeah, well, we, you need to uh, drive a bit more conservatively. <laughs> I just want to add that, even though I'm driving it... Like a dickhead. <laughs> spiritively, right? Yeah. I'm not, even, I'm not even pushing this car. There's loads left in it. Not petrol-wise. There's not petrol left <laughs> no, in it. There's not. five. Yeah, well, I wasn't exaggerating. If that focuses, we literally do. I'm so, oh, we're now down to five miles, mate. 
told him, I absolutely told him that he was going to run out of fuel. I cannot believe that. Unbelievable. Hey, I told you. Look, there's no you fuel here. It broke it down. Five, five miles left. Everyone knows five miles is like miles. It's Listen. Like five miles is 50 miles. Never mind. We're about a mile away. Get a jog on. See you in a bit. Fuel. I realise now why we spent so much money on this car because it does drive really, really well. It could be yours for 99 pence, levelupgiveaways.co.uk. You can only win it if you buy a ticket. You can buy 10 tickets, buy as many as you want. We at least need to get our money back on it. Otherwise, he cannot do any more videos. And that's fine if you don't want him to do any more. Don't buy any tickets. But if you want him to do some more videos, buy some tickets. So for those who are new to the channel, you might be wondering who this is. So, Lee. Are you going to explain to us what's been going on, mate? Where have you been? What have you been playing at? I've been working, making some money in my other business, which in this business, I don't make any money. Everyone knows, cost of living crisis. Everything's going up, mortgages are going up, everything's going up. Coats are going up. Coats are going up. These are dead expensive now, twice the amount of money there was pre-COVID. I've finally managed to sustain my own wage for YouTube and the unit. So the unit's finally being paid for and some, uh, some bits for the cars are finally being paid for, but there still isn't enough to pay for the likes of Lee, and there still isn't enough to pay for the likes of Ash. I wish that the channel could afford to pay for Lee, but unfortunately it can't. And I'd love to be able to do this for free, but unfortunately I can't. But you could help us out by buying some tickets on this car, and potentially winning this car for one pound. No, 99p. All right, 99 pence then. <laughs> Right, we're going to do a 0 to 60 just to see actually how fast this car is. You ready? Ready. Well, I can say the drag is just recorded 2.8 seconds. Oh my god. I mean, really? That is that is mental that. Front wheel drive as well. And it was wheel spinning for most of that, you know. <laughs> 2.8 seconds. Oh. That's faster than your McLaren. I know, yeah, 99 pence you're gonna win this supercar for. Bargain. Yeah, that is all it is. That is the only reason I've not been in it. It's just a money thing. Can't afford to do it. I need to make some money. And I think everybody can relate to that. If we could all just dick around every single day. For free. For free. Then we'd all be doing this, wouldn't we? We'd all be just be messing about with cars, if you're into cars, obviously. Hopefully that clears up everything with me and Leroy. And fingers crossed somebody win, well, somebody will win the car. Oh, they will. It's on level up giveaways there, you can see it. Not the best pictures because we've not had it probably down there, it's still outside. Yeah. But, as you can see, the car is physical, it is there. To win this car, you need to answer a simple question like that. And if you get this simple question wrong, you shouldn't be driving. All I'm going to say is that. So, answer that, add to basket. 400 tickets or whatever you want to buy and uh, yeah there you go a thousand sold as of today so 1, still 000. 39 thousand tickets yeah. to buy and there is a lot over um, yeah. but that is literally just to cover the cost of what we spent on it we've spent a lot of money on it and yeah someone's going to win it for a pound so you can't really complain can you good luck to you all thank you very much for coming on the video and hopefully we'll see you on another one bye Ta -ta. that was the reason that i've not been in any videos the youtube reason but the actual real reason that you've been waiting for the reason i've not been in any videos with this guy is because he's an absolute charming